today in Corvallis, the final home game of the season for the Beavers, the final road game for the Huskies. As this long-standing Northwest rivalry continues, it's the Washington Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers on an absolutely perfect day for college football. And I can't tell you how much a Beaver win today would mean to this program. Hello, everybody. I'm Jimmy Jones. Joining me, as usual, today is Steve Priest, and we're pleased to have Chuck Nelson of the University of Washington Drew, and also the number two all-time scorer. My pleasure, Jimmy. Pleasure to be the token Husky here on the broadcast today. You know, Washington, of course, has had some severe ups and downs. They can't go to a, a bowl. They've lost three games. They've had a lot of difficulties. And then again this past week with Jason Shelley getting into more trouble. This must be a difficult time for Washington to focus on a football game. Well, certainly a lot more downs than ups, starting with the probation and the sanctions that the Pac-10 Conference levied upon the program early in the season or just before the season started. You lose your 18-year head coach a week before your first football game. Three losses, shot the goal down of an undefeated season, which at the beginning of the season, the Huskies felt like was their chance at redemption to a certain degree. Just when they think that they can start playing football and concentrating on football alone, they get another ex-player arrested, uh, Jason Shelley here in Eugene. And all of a sudden, they've got to pay attention to some things other than playing football again. It will be a challenge for them to come back and just play football and think about that 100-yard field and not all of the rest of the stuff that's gone on. Well, you're going to see one of the top defenses in the country, the University of Washington, and leading it is DeMarco Farr. From his defensive tackle position, he will have a key role today in stopping the inside part of that option. DeMarco Farr had always been a good big play player. This year he's turned into much more of an every down type of player. He will have to play well every down here today. Eric Bjornsson gets his first start at quarterback for the University of Washington Huskies. Damon Heward is going to get a chance to watch from the bench a little bit today. Last week against Arizona State, Eric came in, played pretty well in two and a half quarters, 186 yards, 6'5", 225 pounds. He is a very good athlete, played wide receiver last year and had 14 catches. He's on the field as much for his res the respect that his teammates have for him and his ability to lead a team in the huddle as he is for his considerable uh, abilities as a quarterback. All right, Chuck, and we look forward to your comments today. Well, Oregon State has a pretty solid defensive unit themselves, and leading the way is Chad DeSully. He had probably his best game of the season last week. Well, Chad did have an excellent game. He was player of the game against Stanford. Um, he's a four-year starter, Jimmy, one of only two on the, uh, the Beaver team. He came in here as a linebacker, and he's just continued to get bigger and stronger and play better football. He gives the Beavers an excellent pass rush from their three-man line. As you see, Chad knock a ball down there. He's an excellent player against the run also. You see the pressure coming from the inside in one of his sacks this year. He also has five tackles for loss, and he's a mainstay on that defensive line, their senior leader. On the offensive side of the ball, Cam Reynolds has just been a great surprise. He played as a true freshman last year. He leads the Beavers in scoring with J.J. Young. You see here a patented option out of the triple option play, Raheem Muhammad, outside to Cam Reynolds against UCLA for the long score. He's a great runner, a great blocker, and he catches the ball, too, as last week he catches the longest pass of the season by the Beavers. Here it's coming out of his halfback position, fakes the block as he does on most of the option plays and just heads downfield, outruns the linebacker for the big score. And you know, Oregon State has lost their last two games, but a lot of people think they should have won them. And Jerry Pettibone told me this week that they made more mental mistakes in that game than any game this season. Well, you know, you wonder how much the loss at UCLA when the Beavers actually had an opportunity to beat a nationally ranked team and maybe have an effect on the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Um, they came back against Stanford, played very down. It looked like they'd uh, been beaten by 50 points, not a close game, and they didn't play well, as you said. Many mistakes uh, still came back and had a chance to win. This is a young team. Uh, losses like that that are close against good teams affect how they play, but this is a team that doesn't quit. The Beavers are playing at home today. They haven't quit all season. In fact, they haven't quit since Jerry Pettibone came aboard. This would be a good football game. Yet a fourth member of our broadcast team is waiting down on the sidelines. Let's check in with David Endress. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Beautiful day down here on Parker Stadium. And they have to take the jacket off before the day's over. It's kind of warming up. You know, you talked about the two losses the last two weeks for Oregon State against UCLA and against Stanford. Stanford. You would think the team might be down, but it was interesting. Coming off the field at Stanford, I had a chance to talk to the couple of Oregon State players, and you really had to like what they had to say, the attitude that they had. They were upset that they lost the Stanford game, a close one again, but they said, hey, we are mad. We are upset. We should be winning these football games, and they said, we're going to take it out on the Huskies next week, and in three weeks, we're going to take it out on the Ducks. We'll see what happens this afternoon. 
All right, David, thank you very much. And I think we're ready to go. We're glad you're along, and we'll kick it off right after this. Welcome back to Corvallis and Parker Stadium. A very big day today for the Huskies. A win would guarantee their 17th straight winning season. Of course, we talked about what a victory would do for Oregon State and their program. Jim Lambright is the head coach at the University of Washington. Very difficult to succeed a legend, but that's what he's doing is Don James has stepped down. He's fifth with the Washington program for almost 30 years. He's five and three going into the game today. And Jerry Pettibone for Oregon State. He had a difficult time trying to get this program turned around, but his, he and his staff have worked incessantly, and they definitely have turned the corner. This is no longer a team to disregard. The officials today, Jim Springer is our referee. Dave McCullough, our umpire. Head linesman is Cleo Robinson. And Cap Anderson is the line judge. The season heavily favors Washington. They've won five the last five in Seattle and Washington 45 to 16 they've been able to score some points on the Beavers and we were there for that last game that was won by Oregon State in Seattle 21 to 20. The rest of the officials the field judge is Nardi Samuels side judge Laird Hayes and the back judge Rich Freitas. Oregon State won the toss and they will receive. Kicking off will be Jason Crabb. J.J. Young and Chad Paulson are deep to receive. Boy, what a day. Oregon State has not played in a, even a cloudy day today. They'll, they'll film this for their recruiting, Jimmy. Never yeah. rains in Corvallis. <laughs> Crab into the ball, hits it high. Paulson gathers it at the three-yard line and bursts straight ahead. And he's tipped up at the 15-yard line. Let's look at the starting lineups for Oregon State. Raheem Muhammad, who stepped in when Shanklin injured himself and has done an outstanding job of running the offense. Only 5'8", 186 pounds. J.J. Young, Chad Paulson, John Young, Mark Olford, Ray Penniman. Chad Paulson is Mr. Reliable. He's a candidate for the Doak Walker Award. Offensive line featuring Adam Albo, starting left two, Johnny Fenga, Eli Kalanavalo, and John Garrett. John Garrett is a guy you don't hear a whole lot about. But he's there game in and game out. He started 30 straight games for Oregon State. First down for the Beavers just across the 15-yard line. Beavers in the wishbone. This is Chad Paulson picking his way. Nice pickup by Paulson as he's out to the 24-yard line. He's stopped by Reggie Reeser. Here's the Washington defensive front, Jamal Fontaine, Trevor Highfield, who's their leading tackler, and DeMarco Farr, we told you about at the top. Demetrius Devers, Steve Springstead, Inc. Aliaga, and Richie Chambers are the linebackers with Lewis Jones, Lamar Lyons, Russell Harrison, and Reggie Reeser, the secondary. It's second down for the Beavers. And he picks up the first down, I believe. That was John Young. One of these hard-working fullbacks for Oregon State, stopped by DeMarco Farr. Fullbacks have done a great job. Well, expect to see this to be a fullback game again today. John Young, Cedric Thomas, um, they'll alternate through with J.D. Stewart and sometimes even Curtis Willis. This Oregon State team as a fullback team has, uh, what, 800 yards this year? Yes, uh, over 800 yards. What I was impressed with in the fullback stats, only one yard lost in over 150 right. carries by Oregon State fullbacks. It's first down and 10 at the 26-yard line of Oregon State. And again, they pound the fullback straight ahead for two or three yards. They've also got another fullback who's redshirting this year, Raul Morgan, who is really, truly an outstanding, highly recruited kid. Well, the Beavers' fullback position is set, secure for years to come with Mr. Morgan and the other people we talked about. Um, Curtis Willis is the only person graduating this year to see J.J. Young, Oregon State's leading ball carrier, other than the fullbacks combined, that is. It's second down for the Beavers, second and eight at the 28-yard line. 
Mohammed trips up and goes down. So that'll be a loss of about four yards for Oregon State. Well, it was a play pass, Jimmy. Uh, you see Mohammed right here. In fact, it looked like a little bit of a late start. Ties his feet up with the right guard right there, but it was faking the fullback up the middle. The receiver, the lone receiver coming out, I believe he was unbalanced right, as you see Muhammad hitting turf right there, was running a deep post, trying to take advantage of what teams have shown Oregon State this year, which is nine, ten people within a yard or two of the line of scrimmage. It's third down and 11 for Oregon State, an obvious passing down for most teams, but Oregon State is last in passing efficiency in the nation. They don't throw it much. And J.J. Young scampers out of bounds at the 35. And Oregon State is the number one rushing team in America. Good block on the play that time by Chad Paulson. Well, you see, this is the double option. Oregon State gets just what they want, which is a quick pitch, out, uh, a forced quick pitch. Get the ball to J.J. Young, Chad Paulson, Cameron Reynolds, and just a yard short. So Tim Collis will have to putt it, standing back on his 20-yard line. To Napoleon Kaufman and Ben O'Brien. That has to terrorize Oregon State's uh, oh, punt yeah. cover team. I, you can't kick it away from anybody because they're both outstanding. Not a long punt. And it's gathered at the 27-yard line, and Kaufman goes forward across the 30. And I think we might have had a penalty flag thrown down there. Here's Eric Bjornsson, who will make his first start. He's the quarterback, a junior, stepping in for Heward. The rest of the offense features Napoleon Kaufman. What a back he is, one of the tops in the conference. Matt Jones, D.J. McCarthy, Theron Hill, and Mark Bruner, arguably the best tight end in the league. The offensive line, Pete Pearson, Andrew Peterson, Jim Novell, Patrick Kessie, and Tom Gallagher. This is a very large offensive line. They average 295 pounds tackle to tackle. It's an offensive line that was expected at the start of the season to be the strength of this Husky team. A lot of experience, a lot of size and strength. Some people are disappointed in the play of the offense in general and point the finger at the offensive line. It's a lot of, lot of blame to share. <laughs> a big, big lads up there, three of them over 300 pounds. Huskies push back to their 22-yard line, so it's first down and 10 as Washington executes their first offensive play. And it's tossed out to Bryant. And he gets a good gain of about eight yards coming to the 30-yard line. Here's the Beaver defense, Chad DeSelli, Tom Holmes, and Mark Schultz. They've all done an outstanding job this year. The linebackers, Tony Obilovich, Dennis Edwards, he's a senior. This will be his last home game. Rico Petrini and Kane Rogers. And the secondary has done an outstanding job. Ephraim, Hale, Tung, and Herschel Curry, also a senior. Washington needs a yard for the first. It's second down and one, just nudged across the 30. Bjornsson going to keep it. Wrapped up from behind, and he may not have gotten the first down. That was Chad DeSully, who had a great game last week with six tackles, a tackle for loss, and a sack versus Stanford. Well, that was the speed option that Washington runs. And Oregon State's plan with this today, Chuck, is to make the quarterback keep the ball. <laughs> well, you've got a quarterback, Eric Bjornsson, who is 6'5", two and a quarter. But the option has been a part of Washington's offense for quite some time. Eric Bjornsson is a very good athlete and can run pretty well with the football. Chad DeSelli and Oregon State would rather have him carry it than Napoleon, but they will give up some big plays to Eric Bjornsson as well. It's third down and one for Washington. And that's the first down out to the 34 yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 for Washington as Kaufman picks up the first stop by Kane Rogers. You could go on and on, Chuck, talking about er, uh, Napoleon Kaufman. Well, the number one rusher in the conference, 115 yards per game, number 11 in the country. It's the chances you see to go over 1,000 yards for the second consecutive season. He needs 83 yards on the day. Now less than 80 on the day to do that. A big play player who is getting better at running inside as well. Third, that's a perfect example there. Third and one, get the first down. Get a big play some other time. Here's a pitch back. And Kaufman is across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. He's already against Oregon State last year with 146 yards. In 1991, he had scored two touchdowns against uh, Oregon State. Rico Petrini makes the stop on Napoleon Kaufman. 
it's good to have Rico back the last two weeks. He missed three and a half uh, games, actually four games, um, with a knee injury. He's come back well. Oregon State's fastest linebacker. He's a 4-5 guy playing in the middle. Washington's offensive line, Tom Gallagher, Pat Kessie, and Andrew Peterson, all 300 pounds. Bjornsson with time to throw, and it is caught. And that's the Ron Hill, the starting split end, the 175 pound sophomore from Gardenia, wrapped up by Herschel Curry. Second and one gives an offense a lot of options. That is the second consecutive time that the Huskies have had second and one. Ran the option first time around. This time we'll try and get a bigger play out of it. Theron Hill has started a couple of games, does a nice job of coming back to the ball here and making the catch. Depth at wide receiver has been a problem for Washington. The suspension of Jason Shelley. Joe Krolik is not here today. Concussion problems virtually for three years at Washington finally have taken their toll. There's the fake on the delay and Bjornsson going deep, incomplete at the five yard line. The cover man back there was William Ephraim, a junior from Fontana, California. He has seven career interceptions and two this year. Well, that looked to be there. Straight drop back and tell us what he's doing, Chuck. He's throwing the ball perfectly where he needs to throw it. Theron Hill <laughs> just doesn't get that left shoulder out of the way. Almost a great play and interception made by Ephraim there. Well, the Beavers will play man-to-man -man every single play. They don't know what the Z-O-N-E spells. <laughs> and they've been tremendously successful this year with this it, pressure. Second down and 10 now for Washington. Kaufman trying to pick his way. He is an amazing running back. Has a dazzling speed of 4-3. Comes to the 41-yard line. Excuse me, the 39-yard line where Michael Hale makes the tackle. This is a Washington offense that has been somewhat maligned in terms of throwing the ball downfield. They show Oregon State early that we've got a big, strong quarterback and receivers that can beat you deep. The play is not made, but at least the threat has been established. Well, let's see if the Huskies do now on third down and six at the 39-yard line of the Beavers. Bjornsson is going to throw. Gets a lot of pressure, and they're going to get him. Back at the 47-yard line. Bjornsson run down and dropped by Michael Hale and Tony Obilovich and Paki Ina. A little bit of a rollout there. I was surprised I haven't heard that they're a rollout team. With a with an athlete at quarterback, I think you'll see more of that, trying to give him give him some options, but too many black shirts take options away in a hurry. 270 pounds worth of Ina. Well, Ina comes in a lot, Chuck, as a fourth defensive uh, lineman in this 3-4 front, but he actually plays a linebacker position. Here's John Wardell's punt on fourth down. Joe Douglas over, and we'll let it roll on into the end zone just ahead of the Washington Rush. We'll be back with football at Oregon State right after this. Welcome back to Corvallis, 8.16 to go in the first quarter of play. We have no score, and it's first down and 10 for Oregon State on the touchback. The ball at the 20-yard line. Raheem Muhammad operating the offensive quarterback. Here's the option. Bad pitch intended for J.J. Young. Fortunately, went out of bounds. There was no fumble on the play. Just about an incomplete pass. <laughs> yes, I think that ball went forward. <laughs> we didn't. We aren't going to tell anybody, though. With Washington moving their defensive fronts around into what we call a pressure 4-3, um, Oregon State will call, will predetermine their call this week much more than they have all season. Normally, Oregon State calls the direction, calls the blocking scheme, and then reads it from the line of scrimmage. But this week, Oregon State will call the fullback into the middle of the line, they will call the counter play, and they will run the double option much more than normal. Interesting, interesting matchup today with the nation's number 10 defense at, in Washington and the leading rushing offense in the nation with Oregon State. And we have an offside, I believe. That's Colin Uvalo who jumped. And we'll see how they rule it. Was he drawn off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> he, he may have been. 
drawn off. You can see he's low and hard right there. He might have been early, but he had great technique. <laughs> That's right. Alai Kalanuvalo, a 285-pound senior from Seattle, played defensive tackle last year. So that That's moves the ball back to the 15-yard line. That's the technique he learned as a defensive tackle. Yep. And he's uh, certainly far from an offensive tackle stand-up pass block. As you can say. Second down and long for the Beavers. Second and 16. This is Chad Paulson hit at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for perhaps a yard gain. Hit by Richie Chambers, who starts at weak linebacker today in the place of Andy Mason. Very important for this Husky defense to put Oregon State into first and, or second and long, third and long situations. Mentioned Richie Chambers getting the start ahead of Andy Mason today. Only five players starting today have started every game for Washington on defense. More injuries this last two or three weeks than Husky fans can remember over the last four or five years. Beavers need 14 yards on third down. A.J. Young going to run out of room as he's belted out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Well, as Chuck mentioned, the, the down and distance means so much in this game. And Oregon State cannot absorb penalties like many teams. You see Muhammad here, again, forced to pitch quickly. This is the kind of play the Beavers want. It's a 5- to 8-yard play, not a 15-yard play. Which is okay if it's third and four. Yeah, but if, when you've been forced into third and long, so Tim Collis on the punt, he's averaging 41.7. He was the number one kicker in the uh, punter in the league for a long time. He's now number two. Kaufman and Bryant await the punt. Not a good punt, very low. Taken at the 43 yard line by Napoleon Kaufman. He's across the 45. So Washington will have excellent field position. The tackle made by Michael Hale. I noticed Tim Collis a full yard closer to the ball today punting. I don't know what that could do except possibly uh, talk a bit about the fake, uh, fake punt situation. It adds a yard to your average is what it does. <laughs> he right. gets the ball a yard farther down past the, past the line of scrimmage. He wants that number one spot in the conference back. Only a 35-yard punt that time with a three-yard return. So it's first down and 10 for Washington at the 46-yard line. This is Matt Jones, the fullback, bounces off one tackle and continues for a couple. Packy Ina to make the stop on Matt Jones, a senior from Portland. Central Catholic High School, yeah. you see right there. One of a number of Huskies that found their way from Oregon up to Seattle and have found their way back again today. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, Chuck, Jerry Pettibone told me that the offensive line in Washington is the next best in the league behind UCLA. Well, they have a lot of big, strong players. It's an offense that has struggled at times, but when it comes to playing power football, they are amongst the best. Second down and six, Napoleon Kaufman. Excellent defense by Oregon State. They really had that smelled out. That was Herschel Curry over there to run him out of bounds. Well done indeed. When you say smelled out, if, if we see this again, you'll see the tremendous speed and quickness of Napoleon Kaufman. He is hemmed in, and he almost breaks it. That's one of the things that he is very good at is reading the point of attack, and if there is nothing there, he takes off outside. Sometimes he takes off outside even if there is something there because he is a player that tries to make big plays. So he has the speed to get out there and to make a big play. So now it's third down and three for the Huskies at midfield. And Bjornsson will throw it plenty of time. It is caught for the first down. Dave Janoski, a freshman, a redshirt freshman from Corona, California. And that gives the Huskies first down and 10. Kane Rogers, Herschel Curry, and Reggie Tung all in on the stop. We talked about a, a big, strong athlete of Eric Bjornsson. Give him time to throw. Dave Janoski just finds a hole and, and settles in. And that strong arm of number 14 getting off to a roll. Eric feels like given the start knowing he's not going to be yanked after one series or one bad play will give him the confidence to to stay in there and play on a game basis not a play by play basis. The Washington's receiving core seriously depleted. They still have some uh, good receivers but they're very small. Game of two. It'll be second down and eight. Obilovich makes the tackle. A Here's lot a of good look at Eric Bjornsson. A lot of these receivers were recruited when Washington was running a lot of multiple set short passing game one back type of things much as they do now but not featuring the running game quite as strongly with Napoleon Kaufman. It's second down and eight. All the 
the 33 yard line of Oregon State. Yorkson again with a short drop to throw and it is caught by Hill rammed out of bounds immediately by William Ephraim. That was a nice throw. Very well covered linebacker right in the path and Bjornsson just steps back and drills it. Theron Hill knows he's got room and you see Edwards dropping off in coverage there. Barry Bjornsson throws that ball either lower or slower. Dennis Edwards is running the other way. Looks this is like a third straight start for Theron Hill. We mentioned this receiving core has been depleted considerably. That pass looked like it was the fast ball and Dennis Edwards was looking for the slow curve. Third down and two. This is Kaufman. He has it. The penalty flag is now at the 23 yard line. The tackle by Kane Rogers, who's played so very well, is only a sophomore. Comes from uh, Tacoma. Redshirt quarterback in 91, a linebacker in 92, and an outstanding linebacker this year. Offside, defense, five yards, first down. He had a little movement in the middle of the line, looked like Tommy Holmes. Um, the middle guard trying to, to get a quick start, some kind of game on the side with the linebacker there, just a little over anxious. Four minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score yet, but Washington camped at the 22 yard line of Oregon State. They send white outs to the bottom of your screen. Play action for Bjornsson. With time to throw, it is caught by Jones, and he's down. At the four yard line, Matt Jones, his 13th catch of the year. Dennis Edwards, a senior linebacker, makes the tackle. 13th catch of the year for Matt Jones and his longest gain of the year. You see the play action inside to Jones. He just runs out in the flat. Eric rolls that way and flood routes tight end and wide receiver downfield. Get a fullback, gets the fake, and then just outruns the linebacker to the flat with the quarterback rolling that way. It's tough to do and it's a good play by the linebacker to even see it quite frankly. It's first down and goal. This is Kaufman is not going to get it. He's hit at the three might have gotten with the two yard line the tackle by Tom Holmes 266 pound sophomore from North Bend Oregon. Oregon State's strongest player right there Chuck. See those hammers he brings out of his uh, shoulder pad. <laughs> <laughs> Taking advantage of the new weight room. Oh, he really hits. There you see penetration is uh, as much as much much harmful is as harmful to the running game as it is to the passing game especially on goal line situations when that's what the defensive line is trying to do. Got two tight ends in the ball game now second down and three for Washington second down and goal from the three. Yes. And a whistle blows the play dead as a penalty flag is thrown on the far side. I didn't see what happened on that one. Pat Kessie, the offensive right guard for Washington. Kessie, one of those 300 pounders, 305 pounds, a sophomore from Honolulu. You said before, when you're 305 pounds and you start moving early, it's, it's going to be noticed. Well, when did he have to really start moving to get there before the ball? <laughs> Came out of the huddle and never stopped. <laughs> The right guard, number 70, obviously blocking down. So that'll push the ball back to the eight yard line. Bjornsson has looked very well so far today. He's thrown some nice balls. And he's a very mobile quarterback as well. Ball at the eight, second down, and goal. And the shotgun, Bjornsson under a rush, throws it away. Excellent rush by Kane Rogers and Chad DeSully. And a great job by Bjornsson getting rid of the ball. Sack and uh, just about to the end of field goal range, and instead it's a third down, or second down situation still with the penalty. Smart play by the junior in his, in his first start. The Huskies in the shotgun and spread the field. That means you don't have a whole lot of bodies left in the block, and if the defense sends more than your five offensive linemen, you better throw it someplace in a hurry. Third and eight for Washington. Bjornsson going to keep it. Does not get the first down. They've got to reach the goal line. They've got to score. Well, this will bring up fourth down. The tackle by Tony Obilovich. Obviously, a called quarterback draw. That motion penalty looms large. 
Good job by Oregon State of keeping enough people inside and coming off the blocks. And Eric Bjornsson stays in to hold for the field goal attempt. Travis Hansen, a 185-pound senior from Spokane, will attempt the field goal. He is 7 of 14 with a long of 42 this year. Bjornsson to hold. And it is good. And so Washington is on the board first with 2.20 to play in the first quarter. Huskies three, Beavers nothing. Travis Hansen's 20 yard field goal makes it Washington three and Oregon State nothing and the Huskies will kick off to the Beavers and J.J. Young and Chad Paulson will fall back to receive. Here's a look at the scoring drive. Washington's scoring with the kick from the 20 yard line as we mentioned took them 10 plays to get there. The Oregon State will go offensively again and put the nation's number one rushing attack in motion. Chuck it's I don't know if you know that but. Uh, as, well, as well as leading the nation in rushing, the, the uh, Beavers have done it against some of the top-ranked defensive teams in the nation. So that, uh, four of their opponents have been in the top 15 That's against right. the rush with the time that they played Oregon State. Chad Paulson with a nice return out to the 25-yard line. Interesting enough so far, Jimmy, that the dogs have uh, control possession, nine minutes to three minutes, which is unheard of in this Oregon State system. They typically have a huge advantage in possession time. Washington doing an excellent job so far. Oregon State with three straight losses, three straight conference defeats. They have five con consecutive losses to the University of Washington. First down and 10 for the Beavers are at the 25 yard line. Each of these teams hampered with key injuries. One more injury right now. Lamar Lyons coming off the field, hanging an arm. A Kaika Malloy. Cedric Thomas, fullback, with the carry. DeMarco Farr makes the stop. He has 14 tackles for loss and five and a half sacks on the year. He's a good one. Well, Chuck, you were mentioning Lyons coming off the field. He's already moved up one notch because of an injury, so you're basically playing third team free safety right now. Malloy is a very good, very physical player. Marco Farr, one of only five starters for Washington on defense that have started every game. You see he's played well in every game also. So now it's second down and six for the Beavers at their 29 yard line. Pull back again. Cedric Thomas to the 30, got a yard on the play. And that's all, so it'll bring up third down for Oregon State. Fontaine on the tackle, Jamal Fontaine, a senior from San Francisco along with DeMarco Farr. Jamal Fontaine, another senior that's really stepped up his level of play this year. He's fourth in the conference with 15 tackles for a loss. Three and a half quarterback sacks. One of those defensive co-captains. He likes to knock quarterbacks out of the game. Ask Steve Stenstrom. Like yeah. three, three years in a row. Johnson, he got Johnson too at USC. Third down and five for the Beavers. Here's Paulson, has it. And Paulson picks up the first down, crossing over the 25-yard line where Malloy knocks him out of bounds. So it'll be a first down, Beavers, at the 36-yard line. We'll take a look at this again. The double option, you see the fullback leading, and this is what we talked about. The Beavers are calling this. They're not using the triple option today. Again, that's because the defensive line moves around so much and the Beavers have a difficult time making the call. Excellent job by Raheem Muhammad right there, getting the ball out late. First down, Beavs. Big rush put on the toss to Young. Blocked by Paulson. And Young with a nice effort comes out to the 40 and three penalty flags fly this time. Might have had a late hit. Either a late hit or a face mask, possibly, but everybody saw it. David Kilpatrick, a backup rover for Washington, credited with the tackle on Young. David Kilpatrick has started a few games this year as well. Defensing this option is largely an assignment <laughs> proposition. You're 
you're a defensive player, depending on what defense is called, you are assigned to the pitch man. Double block in the back. Offense. Oh, Ten my. yards from the spot of the foul. The key first down. Well, that's a, a penalty a series for Oregon State. Looked like it happened just as the play goes out of bounds. Again, the very quick force. Mahim, er, Mahim. Raheem oh. gets it out quickly to J.J. Young. Good blocking outside. You watch uh, here. Let's take a look. Can't quite see who it is. Yes, yeah, Cedric Thomas. Iso it out there. The fullback leading. He's following in, trying not to get in the way, but just a little push. And uh, anytime they pull their hands up, you know they're guilty. You know who it is. Uh, <laughs> it's well, like it's me. Take me. This what hurts. It brings the ball back to the 21-yard uh, line. Thomas breaks away for a moment, comes across to the 31-yard line. Oregon State actually doesn't incur a lot of penalties. They are the least penalized team in the league. Well, it's interesting today, as we've said before, one penalty really hurts this Beaver team, and that's been one a series. Wanted to point out that the fellow who was penalized there, Cedric Thomas, came to Oregon State and played as a true freshman quarterback, Chuck, and now he's basically moved into to alternating full-time at the fullback position and is really a, a powerful, strong fullback, a running fullback, um, is going to shed some real people around this league in the next couple of years. Well, time runs out in the first quarter, and after one, it's Washington three, Oregon State nothing. You're watching Oregon State Beaver football on Prime Sports Northwest. One quarter has been played. We're preparing now to start the second quarter with Washington on top, 3 0. The only score a 20 yard field goal by Washington. Surprisingly, Washington has controlled possession 9 minutes 17 seconds to 5 minutes 43 seconds for Oregon State. And a very quick first quarter, too. Not a lot of balls put in the air, certainly not by Oregon State. <laughs> and Oregon State averages 28.1 yards per game in passing, but they do lead the nation in rushing and against University of Pacific rushed for a record 667 yards. Against Washington the last two years, Oregon State has thrown for a total of eight yards. <laughs> just Here's passed. a pass and it is caught by Chris and what a lick put on him. Chris Cross, a 201 pound sophomore from Woodburn, Popped by Reggie Reeser. Well, actually, they got seven right there, so they're still. Be <laughs> take a look at this. The, the fake of the triple option. Raheem sets up. They take a very short drop, as you can see, Jack, and they're trying to work Raheem outside a little bit more. He's not very tall. Trying to get him with a little bit of a roll to give him better vision outside. But it's a, a one receiver offense most of the time. Third down and seven for the Beavers at the 41-yard line of Oregon State. Muhammad had a, a lane there for a moment that closed up fast. Springstead, Steve Springstead, the number one tackler on this Washington Husky team, makes a stop. Steve Springstead, a his inside linebacker position in a lot of these assignment defenses versus the option, has quarterback responsibility. That time, the outside people fulfilled their responsibility and took the pitch away. That's DeMarco Farr getting up very slowly. Well, that'd be a severe blow to this team to lose him. Here's what happened in the first quarter. Oregon State with only with a, with 45 yards rushing to only 20 for Washington with the passing yards. Nothing for the Beavers. And again, the time of possession, a big factor. Oregon State usually has a clear advantage. Here's Tolis to punt under a lot of pressure and down he goes and there goes the flag. It'll be roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. And I think that was Malloy. And he Akaya Malloy. And Tim Cole has finally hit one. Big kick. Boy, and he was hit pretty good. The fourth down and five will give Oregon State a first down. Huskies had returns called in the first two punts, but this time you see they obviously have the rush on, and Malloy, Scotty Greenlaw, both get pieces of Tim Colas. No acting job there. It was a real, real roughing call. Must have been quite a shock, Chuck, this week. Washington not ranked. 
First time in a long time. They were number 19 last week prior to that Arizona State loss. First time since 1989 and virtually the first time that this senior class has not been been ranked. But Boy, what a, what a career these seniors have had. Mm -hmm. Three straight Rose Bowls, national championship. 22 and one at Husky Stadium. Beavers in Washington territory. That was J.J. Young for the play. Is blown dead. There is no play. This senior class for Washington, 36 and 8 overall in their career. The last 12 games, however, this Washington team is only 6 and 6. And the last one, one and six in their last seven games away from Husky Stadium. That's shocking. I, when I saw that in the uh, printed information we got, I could not believe that. That's uh, I would have never guessed. How do you count? The Arizona game last year, UCLA game this year, Rose Bowl, obviously Ohio State, obviously quality opponents in a number of those games. Are are the Huskies away or aware that they're playing away today? But, uh, they've got white shirts on. <laughs> Second down and 15 for Oregon State. Backed up to the 49-yard line now. This is Paulson. Doesn't have a lot of straight-ahead speed. An intelligent runner. Knocked out of bounds at the 49-yard line by David Kilpatrick. One thing that this Husky defense does have, it may not have a lot of experience right now, but everybody's got speed. Once again, Aliaga forces the early pitch, and Kilpatrick plays off the block and gets help from an obviously healed up Lamar Lyons. And Kilpatrick makes an excellent play, just stringing it out. J.J. Young, a very good blocker. Nick Aliaga getting this first chance to show Husky fans extended action. Had a great showing in the spring game this year. Broke a bone in his foot early in training camp. Saw a little bit of playing time last week to start today, and he's playing very well. Second down and 15. Mohammed to throw. Oh, it's dropped across the way by Chris Cross. Wouldn't have had a first down anyway. But he was hit at the 38-yard line. But an excellent throw. Take a look at this same pass we just saw on the other side of Chris Cross and delivered on time appropriately, and Chris just drops the ball. He might have been uh, hurt by uh, looking into the sun on that one. Bright, sunny day. Just marvelous weather. So the Beavers come up over the ball now. Third down and long. Third and 15. They've really not been able to spring a running play up today. Here's J.J. Young. To the 40, he's got the first down. He may be gone. He's, fast. he's got that 4-3 speed. He is gone. Touchdown, Beavers. Well, we mentioned earlier uh, that J.J. Young is a legitimate back with that 4-3 speed, one of the top backs in the Pacific 10 Conference. Well, he can fly, and this is a great run. I mean, uh, the U UCLA, Washington linebacker, again, does a great job stringing this play out. It's a dead play. And then J.J. uses his blocker very well. I think that's Chad Paulson out making the block, uses him, sets it up, and then just turns it on. And once he gets his speed going, Nobody's going to catch him. Hopefully we'll have a shot of this, Chuck and Jimmy, but this is a young man who's just had a great year, may end up getting his 1,000 yards. They're Buddy. half of the game plus another one with Oregon. And 48 yards on that run. Kick is up by Brooke Knight, and it is good. And the Beavers take the lead. 13 minutes to go in the second quarter. It's 7-3 Oregon State. Well, this was a third and long. Again, the Beavers had been penalized, put in a difficult situation. Take a look, the double option to the wide side of the field. There's the quick pitch that Washington is going to force all afternoon. And look at the great job by Kilpatrick. Just forces it outside, and then a great cut right there. Beats three or four people who looked like they were really expecting the other guy to make the tackle. And then you got 4-3 against anybody, and nobody's going to catch him. Except that's a pretty quick linebacker right there. Andy Mason gives a <laughs> valiant effort, but you've got both Lamar Lyons. Wow, there's a shot. See the punishment oh, that, that the quarterback takes in this offense. Ouch, he doesn't even get to see this. Yeah. Lamar Lyons and Russell Hairston appear to let up there when J.J. Young is apparently stopped. But this is a Husky defense that was victimized last year by the big play last year. Gave up 20 runs or 24 plays of over 20 yards. This year they had solved that problem 
Only two runs over 19 yards so far this season. That run there, obviously 48 yards, brings back memories of 1992. That was the number two longest rush against Washington this year. You take a look at the scoring drive right there. The Beavers again gain some possession time. It's a big run at the end for J.J. Young, and that's got to be about the 20th run of the season, over 30 yards for the Beavers. As long as we're talking about long runs, the Beavers have made them this year. We're just underway in the second quarter with the Beavers on top, 7-3. to three. Look at That'll give them a lot of confidence as we look at Jim Lambright. Look at those eyes, Jimmy. <laughs> he looks oh, he like was a, he was a fine player at Washington. He was an all-conference player. All-conference, <laughs> undersized defensive line, but you'd like to take Coach Lambright, Jack Obilovich, and let them stare at each other as you watch Oregon State punch this ball so that they don't have to look at uh, Bino and Napoleon Kaufman run it back. I wouldn't want to look at him either. David Ritchie with the fair catch, smart play. Huskies take over on their own 29. The Huskies have started average start point this year is their own 34 yard line as you see the quarterback change this is not reflective on the play of Eric Bjornsson when Damon Heward was the starter in virtually every game this year Eric Bjornsson as the backup would get a series in the second quarter so this is this is not straying from a philosophy this is just Damon Heward getting some quality playing time Heward a 220 pound sophomore excellent arm going deep Hill is out there almost intercepted that was William Ephraim who has two interceptions this year the Oregon State secondary has been very tough on the pass they're one of the top ranked teams in the nation with pass interceptions 14 interceptions on the air for Oregon State that's number nine but the one-on-one -on -one situation once again Damon Heward knows that's where he wants to go with it but when he has to step up here to avoid the pressure that just gives the Ron Hill too much time to run downfield and you just can't throw the ball down that far. Jump ball situation created and falls to the ground. And as a defensive back, that's your best friend. Good pass rush, destroys the timing, and that makes the play for William E. from right there. We're gonna take a time out here. Washington calls time. We'll do the same and be right back. Here in Corvallis, we have 12.50 to play in the second quarter with Oregon State on top, 7-3. to three. Damon Hurett, a sophomore from Puyallup, Washington, started every game this year until today. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Napoleon Kaufman. Good pressure that time by Buster Illahi. He's only a freshman, he's a dandy. Well, Buster, again, pressuring the quarterback, coming from a fifth back position. Nickel back position right there as the fifth defensive back puts pressure on. He's got a couple of sacks for the year. Plenty of hurries, some big plays. So now Washington face with a third down and 10 situation at the 29 yard line. Washington lost four of their last five on the road. Not very usual for the Washington Husky team. The Ron Hill, it's too high out of his hands. It'll bring up fourth down. William Ephraim on the cover for Oregon State. Well, William Ephraim having a very good day. He's an honorable mention all Pac-10 last year. Started the season playing free safety and moved back to corner where his size helps him a little bit more. At free safety, he was being forced to make a lot of tackles in the middle of the line. You see him just moving on the ball again. Uh, that pass was about eight yards short of a first down anyway. Uh, kind of an unusual way to run a curl. John Wardell, a 205-pound senior from Bakersfield. Will punt it standing back on his 13. Takes the high snap. Gets it away in time. Joe Douglas back to receive it. Takes it at the 29-yard line. And advances to the 33. Where Oregon State will go first down and 10. Oregon State, their last three games here at Parker Stadium, 
They have averaged 474.7 yards a game rushing. It's enormous. Well, that, that game against Pacific was, it was so amazing. No matter what they ran, it turned into a long play, and that was a Pacific team that had played Washington State and Arizona very tough. It's kind of a coming of age that we proved what? to the Beavers they could stay in these games. And what is also amazing is that Jerry Pettibone had a bigger rushing day than that at NIU over 700 yards. So it's first down Beavers, 34-yard line, leading 7-3 over the Huskies. Hole for the fullback, Cedric Thomas cracks out just shy of the 40-yard line. He's stopped by DeMarco Farr and Lamar Lyons. Well, we made the comment earlier that Oregon State will call the fullback play today instead of calling the triple option many times simply to try to stop Washington's defensive lineman from moving up and down the line of scrimmage. Second down for the Beavers and four. As the fullbacks, have, as they have in most every game this year, done a good job. Good, hard, straight ahead rushing. On the option, Mohammed tries to cut it back inside, but is met there. Comes up about three yards short of the first down. Lyons on the stop. Good job by Lamar Lyons of keeping his pursuit angle, keeping leverage. Thus giving Muhammad a choice. If he keeps running straight ahead, I can get him. If he tries to cut it back, I can get him. The pitch man well covered outside. Lamar Lyons with his strength. Just a nice tackle. Doesn't let the 186 pounder get away. Uh, he had an excellent game last year, if you recall, Steve, against Oregon State. That'll be third down and a yard. Here are the rushing yards. Oregon State averaging 308.8 with 101 already. Third down and one. Big play for the Beavers. And there's the money man. Cedric Thompson, the fullback, for the first down. His best game has been 41 yards gained against UOP this year. Donovan Schmidt makes the stop. Young man from Palm Springs, 245-pound junior. Well, again, when you talk about 41 yards for Cedric Thomas, you've got to remember that the Beavers have been averaging over 100 yards a game out of that fullback position with four different guys. The fullback really gets beaten up in this system. On virtually every play, you're taking shots because somebody thinks you have the ball. You either <laughs> do or they think you do. Start thinking it yourself. A.J. Young shakes off one tackler and rolls forward to the 50. Sweet feet. That was a sweet move right there. He had nothing, somehow got four or five yards, well, three or four yards, I guess. You can see he's the kind of player that you really need to break down on and have good fundamentals and to make a tackle on. Well, he started two years ago. Last year was injured most of the year, and people complained that, that we missed at Oregon State his great speed, but the coaches say they missed his great blocking ability more than the speed. It's second down and seven for Oregon State right at the 50-yard line. Muhammad going over the middle. It's incomplete. Let's go down now to the sidelines and David Endress. David? Well, boy, after that J.J. Young touchdown, it really got loud down here all of a sudden, and the momentum really swung. Huskies had it in the first quarter. They had field position. Then with that touchdown, Beavers get the momentum. Really a big shift. We'll see if it holds up to halftime. Well, bad news for Washington. Devers is out for the game. Demetrius Devers, an outside linebacker, added to that long list of injured Huskies. They're pretty well beat up. The good news is that Donovan Schmidt, who was the starter before he got hurt, is healthy again and back playing. Third down and seven. Some room for Mohammed. Fighting for that 45-yard line comes up just a bit short as Lamar Lyons pushes him back. Well, interesting call right here. We'll have a fourth and one. Jerry Pettibone believes they can get yards with this offense. Nope, the punt team coming in. Fourth down and a yard, they will not go for it. It's not unusual, of course, to see Jerry Pettibone go for it on that situation. And it's not unusual to see Jerry Pettibone run the ball out of a punt formation either. Chuck, Husky. he's done it two or three times this year. Husky defense knows that as well. They're lined up in what they call a safe, basically a, a normal defense. I love this punt formation. Just line up across the field. Blocked. And it's blocked. Still bouncing. Still loose, and Oregon State may have Oregon it. Oregon State's got the ball. Oregon State, oh, what a break for Oregon State. DeMarco Farr tipped the punt. It bounced off a Husky, and Oregon State recovered. Let's see if we can pick up who recovered it. 
this is a great effort from the Beaver coming in at the last minute to pick this one off. And that's after just a lousy effort by um, the Oregon State punt team. They just let people walk through. Looked like nobody was going to pick up DeMarco. He just sort of waltzed through. Well, again, the Husky defense is in a safe, but they will always rush a couple of people. DeMarco Farr probably as surprised as anyone. A mistake in judgment not knowing the rules by the Husky punt return team. Once that ball crosses the line of scrimmage, you are a punt returner, Lou Jones. If you touch the ball, it's live. Get away, let it come dead. And you see Chad Paulson flying back in. Just the amazing things Chad Paulson always does on special teams, a big recovery. First down and 10 at the Husky 38. Triple option, Muhammad is dropped for a loss by DeMarco Farr. You've heard it so many times, the more you leave the underdog in the game, if you're the favorite, the more they believe that they can beat you. The scary thing about this game coming in for Husky fans is that Oregon State believes, believes they can win. Coming into the ball game, the they longer do. you keep that hope alive by letting them make big plays, running the option for 48 yards and a touchdown when the play is virtually stopped, you block a punt to make a big play and you give the ball up again. That's the kind of things that will keep Oregon State in the ball game. Second down and 13 for the Beavers. Muhammad to throw again. Intercepted this time. Reggie Reeser gives Washington the ball back just short of the 40-yard line. For Reeser, his third pass interception of the year. And for the Huskies, their 20th of the year, that leads the nation in interceptions. Reggie Reeser, a big, a big reason. Oregon State trying to make another big play in the passing game, but it's kind of the old fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me theory. This time, Reggie Reeser in perfect position and the play well covered. Well, I'm not sure he wasn't the closest man to the ball when it was thrown. Ball at the 38-yard line of Washington. Hill going motion. Thomas with a fine effort. Richard Thomas, a backup fullback. Stopped by Rico Petrini and Packy Eno. We're going to get another look at the throw here. You see, oh yeah, Raheem just puts it about five yards beyond where the uh, curl man was starting to come up. Chris Cross settled in about three yards short of where the ball was going. It looked like uh, maybe there was even a cross up. It looked like Raheem might have been throwing a post pattern instead of the, the stop pattern. The crisscross up. Seven yard <laughs> gain on the play. That's so right. Second down and three for Washington at the 45 yard line. Ewer. This is Ben O'Brien. Knocked out of bounds after picking up the first down by Rico Petrini. One of the things that Jeff Woodruff, the offensive coordinator for the Huskies, has tried to do all year is to get the ball outside to his big play people, Napoleon Kaufman and Ben O'Brien, often in the game at the same time. This time, Bino lined up at a straight tailback position, but a good receiver out of the backfield, a good open field runner once he gets the ball. First down yardage that time. What a tailback tandem with Kaufman and Bryant. Each run is a 4-3-40. Oh, Bryant, oh, hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Reggie Tong in there, and Corey Hewitt. Bang. Ouch. Talked about Oregon State and how important it is to get good yardage on first down. That applies to Washington as well. We pick up a yard here. You see Bino trying to pick his spots. Fortunately, the spot, spot he picks is occupied. <laughs> Here's Corey Hewitt. Man. Corey Hewitt, uh, um, Chuck, was all state in Montana in four different positions the same year. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> the most decorated athlete in Montana history. Good rush put on here. As a receiver, Hill steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Oh, no, he was out of bounds. He was out of bounds. Didn't catch the ball cleanly, according to the official downfield, who originally was running up to mark the spot and then calls it incomplete. Jim Lambright disagrees. You see the wheel route, the out and up. Good throw by Damon Heward, but does he catch it cleanly? I think he catches it cleanly with two feet inbounds. Get a good look at it right That's here. Right. He does not have it. He does not right here. He's got it with his right foot in bounds. He doesn't have it secured with two hands, but it's secured with one hand. I agree with you, but the Beavers will still take it. <laughs> the official that made the call was with an Oregon by State. Theron <laughs> Hills, Theron Hills back. Class of 67. Third down and eight. Heward under a rush. Gets it off in time, but way overthrown intended for Hill. See Herschel Curry with a good drive to the football right there. 
number 20 for the Beavers. Has had some ups and downs, but in that case, made an excellent drive on the receiver. So the Beaver defense holds. Washington will put it away. 6.51 to go in the quarter. And Oregon State leading it 7-3. Joe Douglas will receive the punt. And John, John Wardell. One of the best in the league at getting the ball out of bounds down near the goal line. Shanks this one. And out of bounds at the 24-yard line. We're going to take a brief time. I'll be right back with you after this. 7-3, Beavers lead it. Only a 35-yard punt, and it's first down and 10 for the Beavers. John Young cracks across the 25-yard line where he's met by DeMarco Farr. Second down and eight for Oregon State. Ball at the 25. Reynolds. Nice piece of running by Reynolds to get back to the line of scrimmage after going very deep. DeMarco Farr on the tackle for Washington. Well, I think we were going to see a run pass right there. Uh, Oregon State runs that off the option. Usually when you see a very quick option play, ooh, injured player, and it is a big name. DeMarco Farr down on the Beaver sideline as we look at Cam Reynolds, about ready to test his arm, I think, on that play. This would be a huge loss. Well, he was hurt earlier, but stayed in the ball game. We featured Cameron Reynolds at the outset of the show, and this young man really has some quick feet. He's virtually not tackleable. Here's you see DeMarco Farr coming off the field. Doesn't look like he's hobbled. Maybe just got the wind knocked out of him. It's a lot of wind. <laughs> it is. Look at those arms. Jeez. Let's take another look at it. Nope. Guess we won't. 5.48 to go in the quarter. And the Beavers come up over the ball on third down and seven. Leading seven to three in the first half. Unbalanced line. Cameron Reynolds. He has the first down. He is, we talked about him at the top, and he is the hardest running back on this club. He's knocked down by Steve Springstead and Andy Mason. Just can't say enough for Cam Reynolds. No, and I, uh, we've said this many times this year. As you take a look at him, watch the shot from the inside. Great block there. That was the wide receiver. And look at Reynolds move his feet. He's very difficult to tackle. He's averaging 6.1 yards per carry. He has four touchdowns this year. And last year as a true freshman, he had made the team after about a day of camp. He was that impressive. Ball at the 45 of Oregon State. First down. J.J. Young comes to the 50-yard line. Nice pickup on the play by J.J. Stopped by Ink Aliaga. J.J. Young, who's number four in the conference in rushing, Number five in all-purpose yards. This is interesting. Oregon State audible. Then University of Washington shifted their line, and it ended up shifting it right into a set that works well with that play. Something that the Huskies like to do is shift shift late. Offensive lines do change their blocking schemes after they get to the line of scrimmage. No time to do that against this Husky defense. Second down and five now for the Beavers at 15. Muhammad will keep it. He has the first down. Raheem Mohammed comes to the 43-yard line of Washington. Nice pickup for the young quarterback. A redshirt freshman from Los Angeles. When Not you, a big lad, only 5'9", 189 pounds. When you get the line shift, what Oregon State's linemen will do is just single up. Just single up and pick out a man and stay with him. Nothing fancy. They're able to do it because their line play is so much improved and some huge people. Take a look here. We'll, we'll look one more time. Andy Mason, number 13, coming in right there. Good block. Looks like they're dancing. We didn't think Andy was going to play today. On first down, Mohammed gets about three. 
and that's it. Tackled by Ink Aliaga and DeMarco Farr. I love that name, Ink Aliaga from Hawaii. Let's just hope that sometime during this game, Ink Aliaga isn't blocked by Ali Kali Nalalu. <laughs> You're yeah. close. Latu, Fenga, and Kalanuvalu. The Tonga connection up front of the offensive line for Oregon State. It's second down, seven for the Beavers at the 39 of Washington. John Young struggles for a couple. John Young, who's had an outstanding season, a starting fullback, a junior from Roseburg, Oregon, at 65 yards and carries against Fresno State. He's tackled by Donovan Schmidt and DeMarco Farr. And Farr again seems to have something problematic. He's got the look of one of those stingers where when they hurt, they hurt like mm -hmm. mad, and then they go away, and you think it's okay, and then every now and again it comes back. DeMarco Farr keeps coming back as well. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the second quarter. Beavers with third down and six. And Washington's 38. Gets to Young, gets the block, and comes up short. He's by. tackled by cornerback Russell Harrison. Boy, the Beavers had one block there. The play was there, the right call up. Chad Paulson just didn't get enough of the backer out there. Fans want the Beavers to go for it. The Beavers really in two down territory. 51 yard field goal, but too short to punt. And big bodies coming in, no punters. No, sir, they will go for it. Clock continues to run. Two and a half minutes to go in the quarter with the Beavers on top, seven to three. Well, this is normally a double option situation for the Beavers. Get the ball to Chad Paulson, let him run with it to the wide side of the field. Muhammad wants to talk it over a little bit. A timeout called to so make sure that everybody's on the same page, doing the right thing. Last week, a huge play in the Stanford game, Chuck, was a timeout call that Oregon State did not, the coaching staff did not see the signal for the play to start or for the timeout to end, sent the quarterback in, and Oregon State went from a fourth and a half a yard to a fourth and six. Had to try a field goal instead of uh, going for a first down in the last quarter. May have been, they missed the field goal, may have been the, a factor in, in that football game, or was a factor in that football game. You can bet they'll be out of the huddle quickly. <laughs> be lined up there. early. And the way Oregon State was moving the ball on the ground that time, it didn't look like it'd be much of a chore to pick up a no. half yard. Playing very well last week, and it come down from 24-7, I believe, or come back from 24-7. See the field goal kicker, Brooke Knight. Oregon State's kicking department has not been perfect this year. You'd appreciate that as a former kicker. They've uh, tried two or three different people. In fact, three to be exact. Brooke Knight is a walk-on uh, player from the baseball program who kicked at Linfield a couple of years ago. Has would a it, very strong leg. Wouldn't it be nice, Steve, to, to put a black jersey on Chuck Nelson and send him down there? <laughs> he still holds, you still hold some NCAA records. What I can't believe is that you kicked 30 consecutive field goals at one time. That uh, was a long time ago. <laughs> Keep that yeah. leg in shape. Over the course of over the course of two seasons, and uh, played on some good football teams back then. Got a couple of Rose Bowls in, a Aloha Bowl, and a Sun Bowl. Got to kick a lot of PATs too. I got got to see the field a lot. Well, that's ball great at memories. The, ball at the 34, and the Beavers go for it on fourth down and two. Mohammed. To Young, he's got the first down if he didn't step out of bounds, and he is gone. The five, touchdown Beavers. No flag back. He did not step out of bounds, and the Beavers score again. Well, you, you see it, Chuck. This is what they're so capable of doing with this option, and this is a good Washington team. This is what they've done against practically everyone this year. Take a look. It's the double option. As a matter of fact, it's into the short side of the field against the defense. And uh, just an excellent job by Raheem right there. And this week, J.J. Young stays in bounds. Last week, the Beavers cost themselves a touchdown by just a foot on the line, and it ended up being a huge play. So, did, no, so did this one. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke Knight will kick the extra point. He's 10 of 12 on the year, and it is good. It is good. Now it's the Beavers on top, 14 to 3, and we'll be back with a kickoff right after this.
We are back to Corvallis. Take another look at J.J. Young on a 33-yard touchdown run. And then this is on a fourth and one into the sideline. Excellent job right there. Again, it looked like the linebacker just held up a little bit. He's got to get to that pitch man. Washington was forcing with the cornerback. It looked on a late force different than they've uh, forced the option to, uh, this far in the game. Obviously, an assignment blown somewhere. You had two people playing the quarterback and nobody playing the pitch man. And J.J. Young is a player you've got to pay attention to. Well, J.J. Young has had 400-yard games this season. He just missed it by one yard against Stanford and already in eight carries. He has 114 yards today. The Huskies last week gave up over 100 yards to two different players. Here's Montgomery and Mario Bates. Bryant, excellent return out to the 35-yard line. Dean O'Brien, number time, nine all-time career rusher at Washington. Well, Brooke Knight was just trying to pooch kick that ball, get it down there, and he got a little too much leg in it. Maybe just typical kickers, too pumped up, huh, Chuck? <laughs> Kicks it too far, wants to go down. He tries to make the tackle at the end of the play. He's just that good that he can't <laughs> hit it short. It's a tackle on that play by Mark Olford, a wide receiver this year. He was a starting quarterback last year. When they moved him, he almost left school, but it's a tribute to him that he not only came back, but he's playing so hard. Makes a lot of tackles on the special team. Oh, he's a tremendous blocker. You look down this Oregon State roster, and virtually everybody's an ex-quarterback. That's right. <laughs> and they, those guys were all ex-kickers. Time for Heward to throw, but it's out of bounds. Bjornsson is William Ephraim. Bjornsson's back in the ball game now. He's got a strong arm. He really rifles that thing. Eric Bjornsson, a big, strong player. Something you need to be in the Pac-10 because even when the ball is gone, you're going to find some turf. Ouch. So it's second down and 10 now. The ball at the 31-yard line of Washington. Time getting short here in the second quarter. Less than two minutes to play. Bjornsson, an awkward throw. Nice speed. Incomplete. Herschel Curry on the tackle. Looked like he threw off the wrong foot. Excellent drive on the ball by Curry, as you see right there. Let's take a look at this throw. A tough throw, rolling to your left. Eric does a good job of getting his shoulder squared up and throws the ball on target. But Herschel Curry did a good job of closing on the play. Steve, you were telling me during one of our breaks an interesting story on Herschel Curry. Well, Herschel's a young man that the Beaver fans know did not play football. He's 26 years old, came out of the service and, and tried it in a city flag football uh, game and ended up a receiver at Chabot Junior College and on to Pac-10 football as a defensive back. On third down and 10. Ewers not going to get him. Missed by a long ways. Did you see Herschel? Bring up fourth down. The intended receiver was D.J. McCarthy covered by Curry. And Herschel Curry again having a great day. He was a uh, defensive back player of the game last week against Stanford. Seems to always be there and, and is just doing an excellent job. He's got a couple interceptions so far. Three consecutive passing plays for Washington. If you throw it on first down and it's incomplete, you almost have to throw it on second and third down. Wardell at the 21 yard line to punt to Joe Douglas. Good punt. Hits it well. Douglas back to the 15. And it's not going to get very far. Wrapped up at the 19 yard line. So the Beavers will start at that point, first down and 10, with a minute and 37 seconds to play in the first half and leading this baby 14 to 3. Usually when you think of, a, of an option offense, you think with a minute 37 to go in the half and 81 yards to go, there's probably not much of a chance that they're going to get anything. But this is an option offense that can get big plays. As you mentioned earlier, Steve, over 20 plays of 30 yards or more. They may be on the ground, but they can cover a lot of ground. That was a nice punt by Wardell, 50 yards. Ball at the 19. This is Chad Paulson. A couple of Huskies converge on him at the 20-yard line. A minute and a half remaining in the quarter. The tackle by DeMarco Farr and Richie Chambers. You wonder how much playing or how much matter of, uh, of the point in a game is when, when the Beavers play this type of a spread option uh, Washington doesn't see it all year long. You wonder what that does to thinking, just how they prepare, whether this makes a difference in the winning or losing. I'd like to 
catch on that after this play. So. Second down and eight at the 21 yard line. Cedric Thomas, the fullback. Fullbacks carry the ball 65 times a game for Oregon State. DeMarco Farr on the tackle again for Washington. Well, one of the reasons that Jerry Pettibone is here and running this offense is because that's a way for Oregon State to succeed in this conference is to do something different than what everybody else is doing. Jerry Pettibone has coached it as well as anybody has. The timeout for this Husky defense. It is enough of a something different that this Husky defense practiced against it a couple of days last week before the Arizona State game because you cannot prepare to play a 100% option team in just one week of preparation. Jim Lambright, head coach and defensive coordinator, worked a couple of option defense periods into preparation in the week before the game. And that tells you how far this program has come in three years that Jim Lambright has to work on that a week in advance. I'm certain that, that that wouldn't have happened a year ago. I agree with you totally. I think that uh, this is the way to approach a rebuilding program, particularly one that was that far down in the Pac-10, and he's been able to get a lot of kids. As you mentioned earlier, we, we've got four or five quarterbacks here who came in to run the option and are now starting at other positions. Well, yep. this, this is a program that probably can't compete for the same kids that Washington, UCLA, USC can. If they're going head-to-head -head with those guys to play straight-up uh, offense and defensive-type football, they're not going to get the kids that can do it and win three or four games a year. But if you're going to recruit kids that want to play in the Pac-10 and want to run the option, they've got one choice, and Oregon State is it. Well, here's a startling number. Beavers with 11 minutes, 37 seconds possession in this quarter to 223 for Washington. Here's J.J. Young. That's a nice block for Paulson. Has the first down. And J.J. Young continues to pile up the yards. 120 yards so far in the game for Young. Well, he is impressive in terms of turning on the speed when he needs it and throttling back when he needs it. Just waits and waits and waits for his blockers. Sees the hole and goes. And you can see how big the penetration is by the Huskies forcing that quarterback pitch quick. And J.J. just kind of, as you said, floats back there and then explodes. This should be the last play of the half, 22 seconds to go in the period. J.J. Young picks up three or four more as he dives across the 35-yard line to Marco Farr on the tackle for Washington. One down to 10 seconds now, and they're just going to let the clock run out and head into the dressing room. And Washington will try to adjust for Oregon State. A great first half of play for Oregon State, Steve, but just excellent job. Well, the Beavers couldn't be happier than 14 to three against the University of Washington here at home and their option clicking. J.J. Young with a tremendous speed, two touchdowns and 120 yards on the ground and Oregon State finally in this second quarter dominating possession time. Well, they look more like Oregon State of, of the season so far in that second quarter. Well, it's the type of options that once you get on a roll like that, you, you have the confidence, you have the confidence to run run your offense and keep it going and you get a defense on their heels mm -hmm. hit some big plays inside and outside Washington doesn't know what's coming all right Jerry Pettibone is standing by with David Endress on the sideline David well an excellent first half for the Beavers coach you can go down by three but now you're up 14 to three at the half is that what the score is 14 <laughs> to three it's been a game of, uh, of uh, big plays it's been a, it's uh, it's been a, a first half of a total team effort offense moving the ball uh, making the first downs when it needed to, making big plays that created uh, the touchdowns for us and uh, the defense playing their heart out and doing so far an intelligent job in the kicking game to keep the ball away from uh, Kaufman and, and Ben O'Brien. Uh, th this is an excellent Washington team. They're going to make a move on us in the second half. We, we need to do the things that are important for us to make the adjustments at halftime to keep the uh, momentum on, uh, in this game on our side. What do you tell your players? It's uh, been a while since you've le led a great team like the Huskies, 14 to three. What do you tell them at halftime? The score is zero to zero right now, and it's uh, just like we're starting this thing all over. Good luck in the second half. Back up to you guys. All right, David, Jerry, thank you very much. It's halftime at Oregon State with the Beavers leading the Huskies, 14 to three. We'll be back with highlights and some numbers for you. So stay with us.
We're at halftime in Corvallis, where Oregon State leads the favored Washington Huskies 14 to 3. And it's been a great half on the ground for Oregon State. As a matter of fact, 19 more yards, and the Beavers will record 3,000 for the season. What do you think the adjustments will be made by Jerry Pettibone? Well, when Jerry said that to David Endress, I was going to tell him, don't fix it yeah. if it ain't broke, That's Jerry. Right. This is, uh, I mean, Jerry isn't going to change much. The Beavers only have about six or seven plays anyway. They'll they'll change their blocking a little bit. Uh, I think they'll probably tell Brahim to stay a little bit more on the line of scrimmage, but the Beavers are playing very well. Uh, they are making the big plays. They're staying within their offense, doing the things that they do best. In fact, the only time that uh, things have backfired was that interception, and that's a little bit uncharacteristic of the Beavers. Well, we've got some great highlights to show you from the Oregon State side of the ball. J.J. Young just had an outstanding first half of play, rambling for two touchdowns. Well, you take a look at this. Uh, the option, there it is, the pitch out. A good job by uh, Raheem all the first half. And watch this run. A couple of Huskies just sit down on it right here. They just don't make the play. It's there. And then the great Great effort by J.J. Look at the lineman coming downfield, too. That's been impressive all year, and you see a valiant shot here by Andy Mason, but he isn't going to catch 4-3 um, J.J. Young. That's for sure. And J.J. comes through on the second touchdown also. This is a fourth and one. Good penetration by Washington's line. And again, the excellent pitch late. Uh, as, as Chuck commented earlier, the Huskies had two people on the, on the quarterback and nobody covering the pitch man, and that's suicide against Oregon State spread option. Well, it was a great half for Oregon State, but a very difficult one for Washington, Chuck. Well, you saw a couple of defensive frustrations, and on offense, a first and goal situation that ends up with a third and eight after a motion penalty. The quarterback draw attempt, Eric Bjornsson, comes up short, and that's where Washington got their field goal to get the three points on the board. But it's just a matter of execution for Washington, and the as on defense, we saw people in position to make plays, but they're just not getting done. Uh, both touchdowns for Oregon State. Washington didn't make plays, and on offense, they're not either. Well, look at those numbers, fellas. They pretty well favor Oregon State. Well, the big turnaround in time of possession is phenomenal. Remember, in that first quarter, Washington had the ball for nine and a half minutes, only a couple of minutes in the second quarter. Rushing yards, 202 yards for Oregon State. Remember, this is a Washington defense that only gives up an average of 106 yards per game on the ground. And the Beavers have always run well at home this season and in the Pettibone era, but uh, this is a great day, 200 yards in the first half against uh, the Dogs. Oh, a wonderful day for Oregon State. They'll try to maintain it here in the second half and come away with a win that will be sensational for the Beavers. Second half is coming up, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Corvallis. I'm Jimmy Jones along with Steve Priest, Chuck Nelson, and David Endress. Oregon State leading as we prepare to start the third quarter of play. An interesting number here, fellas. Kaufman in the first half, only 22 yards on six carries. Well, that's that time of possession comes into play right there. Napoleon Kaufman last week against Arizona State had over 100 yards in the first half and only carried the ball twice in the second half. You've got the leading rusher in the conference has only carried the ball eight times in his last full four quarters of football. Well, the Beavers need to keep possession this half. The chances are if the Beavers run the offense the way they're supposed to, that Washington will only touch this ball, as you said at the halftime check, four or five times. Coffin and Bryant await the kickoff from Brook Knight. Angle to the far side. Bryant looking for some room, closed up in a hurry. He comes up short of the 30-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Oregon State. Here's a look at the possessions in that first half. As we said, only, only five in the first half, and that's what Oregon State's time possession offense can do. The field goal there is the, is the key. That was a, a series that very easily could have resulted in six. Check, we have seen games at Oregon State this year, the two they lost to Arizona and Washington State, where they, the other team didn't take the ball over in their own half of the field. 
Georgian is back in at quarterback. The ball punched out close to the 35-yard line. And that was Kane Rogers, the outstanding young linebacker making the tackle. What I think you'll see more of in the second half is Washington trying to get good yardage on first down and just out physical Oregon State. They're going to say, we've got all those big guys up front. We're going to take advantage of those few possessions we have. We're not going to try to be fancy on you. We're just going to try to beat you up and maybe hit a big play in the passing game. Second down and five for the Huskies at their 34-yard line. And Oregon State is offside. Well, I agree with what Chuck says. I think this is a strong, big, physical Washington team, offensive line particularly, with great running backs behind it. And if you can just, as we observe this, if Washington could just get back to what they do best and not panic here, start beating Oregon State down a little bit to take away some of that uh, vigor they've gotten from being 10 points, 11 points up, the Huskies should prevail. That was Tom Holmes who encroached. Beavers take the walk off down to the up to the 39 yard line. So it's first down and 10 for Washington. It's Matt Jones. Oh, no, that's Kaufman. Excuse me. Kaufman. About five yards on the carry. He needs 363 yards going into the game to become the all time single season rushing record. And he's very close to another thousand yard season. Needed 83 coming into the game, had 23 in the first half, picks up another five there. Number eight says, give it to me. This first series is tremendously important to both teams. Just as important to Oregon State's defense to, to stop it here, get the football back. Second down and five. And Bjornsson keeps, gets a couple of yards. Bakiina getting up. Surprised. Also with there, Mark Schultz and Dennis Edwards. Surprised how much this play is run by the Dogs, Jack. Well, it started off because Mark Brunell came into this Husky offense and was such a good runner. They saw how effective it could be, particularly in, you know, short yardage type situations. And then, so they've just left it in. They've been fortunate enough to have quarterbacks that were good enough athletes to run it even after Mark, other than Mark Brunell. Third down and two for the Huskies. Kaufman. And it looks like he has the first down. He was tackled by Reggie Tung and Packy Ina. It is a first down for Washington. Napoleon Kaufman, only 5'9", 175 pounds, but he is very, very strong. Does a good job here of just following Matt Jones. Keep his feet moving, knowing he only needs two. Get those two. He is some kind of back. 3,402 career all-purpose yards. That's sixth in Husky history, and he has another year to go. 177 yards a game, all-purpose. That's third in the country in 1993. First down. Going for McCarthy. Knocked away and intercepted. It was Ephraim who got his hand on the ball. And this is Reggie Tung who comes up with it. And a penalty flag is down back at the Oregon State. 33 yard line. Well, looked like a hold on the defensive back. DJ McCarthy, the intended receiver, basically running a wheel route and out and up, and Ephraim bit on the bit on that out route, knew he was beaten, made a grab. Official caught it and threw the flag. Fortunately for Washington. See Jim Springer making the preliminary call. Did he make two signals? Is there yeah, a personal like foul there tagged on? There's Reggie Tung, and it, the, the call will go against him. There are two flags down, one there on the hold, and then the personal foul looks like it was after the play. Let's uh, pick up the call again, if we can, from the referee. They might have off. Holding before the pass was intercepted. Defense penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. First down. Oh my. Well, Costly penalty. When we take a look at this, you'll see uh, William E. from, well, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll be looking from the quarterback side, but it was just as Chuck described it. There's the pump fake. William is beaten here. Quite frankly, he does what he's best to do, and that's grab a hold because otherwise it's six. 
You can see he slowed him down, then makes an okay play and gets it over to Reggie Town. Big first down for the Huskies. Matt Jones picks up a yard or two before he's cracked down at about the 39-yard line by Chad DeSully. He started 23 consecutive games for the Beavers. Kane Rogers also in there for Oregon State. They'll spot it at the 39. Sully hurt himself a bit, asking for some help. You see Chad DeSully going over to the sideline. Third down and nine for the Huskies. Excuse me, second down and nine. Colin Coffin with a burst of speed. Comes with in about two yards of the first down. Oh, can he accelerate? He is fun to watch. Michael Hale and Dennis Edwards stop him. He is quick. Probably with the exception of Andawan Carter. Nobody in this leg moves like this guy. Does a great job of getting to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Makes it easier for those offensive linemen. They don't have to hold their blocks quite as long. Doesn't take as much hold. 38 yards. Towards that quest of 1,000 on the season. And even more importantly, towards a Husky victory. Third down and two for the Huskies. Bjornsson has the first down. He's out of bounds on the near side, run out by Reggie Tongue. There's a perfect example, again, of Washington in a short yardage situation, running the option, a very good athlete, six foot five, 225, and still can run a 4'6", four, 4'7", four, type 40. You tell, see, it didn't take him long to make the decision that he was not going to pitch it. Eric says he's certainly not afraid to take a hit. He wasn't so much before, but after a year at wide receiver and some wide receiver play this year, he has one reception this year. He's used to getting tackled. He's used to physical type of play. First down for the Huskies. Kaufman. Well played by Petrini. Rico Petrini, who missed four games because of injury. A great speed, very active linebacker. And he'll be back next year for Oregon State. Huskies, a lot of two tight end, one wide receiver set in this drive, trying to reestablish physical dominance as we open the second half. And the Huskies play pass out of this quite a bit, don't they, Chuck? Two, two backs in the backfield, only one wide receiver. Two of their best receivers are the two tight ends, so two tight ends for them does not necessarily mean we're just going to run it. That's Thomas close to the first down. Flag on the play, some movement at the line of scrimmage before the snap. Ephraim and Tung make the tackle, but the advance of the ball is to right around the 13-yard line. Boy, the right side of the Husky oh. line is just blowing people out now. That fourth down option, they completely caved in the left side of Oregon State's defensive line, and they did it again on that play. Three talented seniors on that offensive line, Tom Gallagher, Jim Neville, Pete Pearson. Encroachment. Offside, defense, five guys, repeat second down. So it'll take the, take the down over in addition to the five yards. You gotta look at that right side right here, caving people down. Look at Pete Pearson and Andy Peterson just absolutely collapsing down inside. Richard Thomas, the fullback, a couple yards downfield before he even has to think about making a move or getting in contact. With the penalty, it makes it second down and two. Good defense on Kaufman. Excellent job on the option. And a loss on the play. Well played by Kane Rogers and Reggie Tung. It's a big play on second and two. You normally figure, okay, we're going to run it physically, and we've got two chances to make two yards. But when you lose four yards on second down, all of a sudden that second and two goes to third and six. Well played at the quarterback position. Well played at the pitch man. Napoleon Kaufman just stays alive and then realizes it's futile. And great pursuit. That's what makes the play in the end. Now here's a very big play for Washington. Down 14 to three here in the third quarter. Third down and six. And the ball at the 18 yard line of Oregon State. This is Thomas. He did not get it. Kane Rogers drives him down. It's nice to be physical and try to out physical teams, but third and six. A fullback dive, you better be very physical. Puts a lot of pressure on those up front people because that's not a play that's necessarily 
what you think of on a third and six situation. OSU up tight, good penetration. I don't know, Chuck. Third and six is pretty normal running down around here in Corvallis. On fourth down now, Travis Hansen to kick a field goal. He has one already today, a 20-yarder in the first half. And it is good. So the Huskies put three more on the board, but the Beavers continue to lead. It's Oregon State 14 and Washington 6. Eight twenty-five to play in the third quarter. Beavers lead the Huskies fourteen to six. Well, the dogs got what they needed out of that drive, and that was establishing some offense, establishing the ground game. But the Beavers didn't fold. I think that's just as important. They came back, made the big play when they had to, gave up a field goal, not a touchdown. Lawson at the two, at the twenty, to the twenty-six yard line goes Chad Paulson. He'll finish his career at least the number 11 all-time rusher at Oregon State. Fine effort by Chad Paulson. Take a look at this and might mention that a, a Rhodes Scholarship candidate. That's right. Nice block there and just takes the seam again. Uh, looked like a Husky was right there to make the tackle, Chuck, and just kind of let him run by. A perfect kick by Jason Crabb, high in the air, deep in the corner. The first wave, though, hits that, hits that wedge, and once you pop that first wave, Huskies usually very good at covering kickoffs. They're, they're good enough that you're disappointed when the ball's at the 26. First down for the Beavers is J.J. Young. And got him just by the ankle. Looks like Cameron Reynolds there. That was Ink Aliaga who ran, just did catch it. Ran right behind the guy he was supposed to block. You see Russell Airston twisted an ankle, hit a hip. Or, well, the, the penetration that the uh, dogs are getting in the middle of that line as you see the scoring drive look 11 at the plays look at the time used on that drive well that's the thing Washington uses up six and a half minutes and yeah that's that's good but you only get three points out of it with this Oregon State offense you use up, if you use up six and a half minutes and only get three points you're only going to get the ball three more times probably in the half and you're still down at least one score second down and seven for Oregon State at their 29 this time the fullback doesn't get much John Young to about the 32. He's tackled by Highfield and Springstead. John Young told you one of those hard working fullbacks John Young J.D. Stewart and Cedric Thomas really haven't seen uh, J.D. Stewart yet today. No uh, the coaches play these players a lot by the week in practice. Yes. Sometimes we don't hear about the injuries the little Knicks. John Young and Cedric have just been playing so well hard to put a third person in the mix. Third down and four. Huge play for the Husky defense. J.J. Young gets a block. He's got the first down. What was that? Chad Paulson threw that block back there. Donovan Schmidt makes the tackle, but J.J. Young picks up another first down. Well, I'm not sure it was Chad, uh, or I think this was the double, as you see. Now look at, uh, first of all, Chad Paulson gets the nice block there, and look at uh, John Young downfield. That's the fullback, folks. Great job. You have to be able to block to play for Jerry Pettibone. Well, well, these are just small linemen. That's how you get big plays in the running game as well. It's when you've got outside people blocking. You've got people blocking downfield. You've got wide receivers that continue to throw blocks long after the ball is snapped. First down and 10 Beavers on their 39 yard line. Here's J.J. Young again. Breaks the tackle. Comes up to the 48 yard line. Racking up the yardage today is J.J. Young. He stopped that time by Russell Harrison, a junior from Bellevue. 144 yards now for J.J. Young. Watch the blocking in the center. Look at these big guys. and You see Leitu there, thing at the start of the play. These guys are three people in the middle, over 300 pounds. They'll end up down the field, knocking people down. 
Look at the block by Fing. It takes two people out. Lay two there. Colin Navalo. And look at upfield. Adam Albaugh, 10 yards down the field. Second down and two for the Beavers. John Young breaks for the first down to the 47 of Washington. Oregon State has reached the 3,000 mark plus the first time an Oregon State team has ever been over 3,000 yards rushing for a season. Steve Springsbed combines with Lamar Lyons to make the Husky tackle. Quite a season as you see John Young just having a great year as a fullback. Three has not missed a play with an injury, Jimmy. <laughs> 3,020 yards, that's a lot of yardage. Sure. First down at the 47 of Washington. Mohammed pitches. Jad Paulson. Banged out of bounds at about the 41 of Washington. He'll be uh, three yards short of the first down. Springstead again on the tackle, along with Lamar Alliance. He was out most of the spring, was Springstead with a knee problem. Now he great played a great game against Oregon State last year. Talk about over 3,000 yards in a season rushing. Might wonder what the Pac-10 record is. UCLA over 4,000 <laughs> yards well, rushing, that, average that, over 400 yards, over 400 yards yep. a game. That was a wishbone attack Back at that time. Back in 1973, time. I believe. Second down and four for the Beavers. Paulson comes up short of the first down. That's where they spot it. They'll have a one or two yards to go for the first. The tackle by Richie Chambers. A nice job by Richie Chambers. That play pretty well blocked at the point of attack, but coming down from his outside linebacker position to make the play. Richie Chambers getting extended playing time because of the injury to Andy Mason, a bad ankle. Andy playing a lot, but certainly not full speed. We're talking about a half speed Andy Mason. Hillary Butler is out of the game. Demetrius Devers is out of the game. Steve Hoffman. Lost for the season. A lot of new faces. A long time since Washington had this kind of injury problem. Young in trouble. He's not going to get away, and he's dropped way back on the 49-yard line. And that's wow. an excellent job by the Husky defense. Lamar Lyons, along with Lewis Jones, and Spring, uh, Steve Springstead. Great job by Ink Aliaga of playing right through the quarterback. On to J.J. Young. Good pursuit by the Huskies. J.J. Young, as we've seen, a player that you've got to keep playing until the referee blows the whistle. Well, that play was made because the quarterback read the wrong man. As you could see, he pitched it with nobody on him. He just needed to keep the ball, keep running, force the, uh, force the pitch man. Bounces at the 20, and the Beavers will let it roll dead. And we'll be back with more Beaver Husky football right after this. It's first down Huskies at the 19 yard line trailing 14 to six Bjornsson breaks it at the 20 and steps out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Good job of running by Eric Bjornsson coming into the game. He's got 43 yards in the season rushing. Right from the get go as soon as he rolled out you could see that once again that whole side of the field was sealed off. Eric Bjornsson the athlete 24 yards rushing on the day. An embarrassing loss last week to Arizona State for Washington. Bjornsson's numbers are pretty good. 17 to 32 for 186 yards. And only two and a half quarters of play. First down at the 33. This is Thomas. Gets two yards to the 35 yard line. Richard Thomas, a sophomore from Kent, Washington, had his first start versus San Jose State, his first TD in that game, and his first child was born. Quite a day for Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas, a great success story. Came out of high school, some academic problems, really turned himself around. Uh, become a very good student. Got a 
lot of good things going for Richard Thomas. Second down and long. Second and eight. He was playing the run very well, as you can see today. Play action pass. It's caught by Hill. Now he fights hard for that first down, and he has it by about a yard. Aaron Hill, Curry, and Reggie Tung on the tackle. It took him about 10 seconds to get those last two yards. He outside, <laughs> yeah. inside, outside, inside, finally forward. Get a look once again at the arm strength of Eric Bjornsson. If they're going to play off, I'm just going to take a three-step drop, turn, and fire. Ron Hill. Good job. Shaking and baking and finally cooking. Herschel Curry does a good job of not letting him get away. Six foot one, he's got a pretty good wingspan against the five foot 11 garage. Here's Kaufman. Picks up three yards. Clock is running, 2.58 to play in the third quarter of play with Washington leading it at this point, 14 to six. Herschel Curry has really made an improvement in that facet of his game. Uh, early in the season, he would have taken a dive at the receiver. Now he stands in there, sizes him up, keeps his eyes where they're supposed to keep him, and waits for help. Ball is at the 46 of the Huskies. Thomas again gets a couple. He's tackled by Tony Obilovich. Huskies once again. Forced in a third and third and long situation. We sure haven't seen the short passing game I was expecting with the tight ends and Kaufman out of the backfield. I don't, I don't think Mark Bruner or Ernie Conwell have caught a pass yet today. Mark Bruner, your number one receiver, with 24 catches coming into the ball game. They throw the ball to the wide outs and the backs, but the tight ends haven't seen it yet. They're down and five for the Huskies. Jorgensen looking for the receiver. Incomplete, and there goes a penalty flag and will have interference. Ephraim was the cover man. It's a tough call. Looked like he made a nice break on the ball. The official had the angle that maybe that back hand was on the back. See the rollout to the right. Receivers just running out routes to the right. Eric gets his choice. It's a nice throw right there. You can see kind of riding the back of DJ McCarthy. Maybe a little bit. McCarthy does a good job. Well, that must have been the situation because the official was looking right at him and certainly didn't hesitate. Let's see if we can pick it up from this side. McCarthy nope. does a good job of keeping the defensive back on his back, and not letting him come underneath to make that play and forcing him to go through me. If, I'm, if he's going to make a play, he's going to have to go through me. And yet another costly penalty for Oregon State. First down at the Beaver 39. Time to throw for Bjornsson, but it's incomplete, intended for Hill. Talk about execution. That time, good protection. The route appears to be pretty well run, and the receiver is open. There's just not a connection between the quarterback and the receiver. You can see Eric's got all sorts of time to throw, and there's, once again, the receiver has the defensive back on his back. Ball just low and away. Talk about fastballs and curveballs. That was that was ball three, outside and low. Second down and ten for Washington in Beaver territory at the 39. Almost an offside. Here's the draw to Kaufman. Look out! He's outside. They'll not catch him. Too much speed, and Kaufman scores. Husky touchdown. And offsides against the Beavers. Flag on the play, but it won't bring back Napoleon Kaufman and that Husky touchdown. First time all day, the Huskies have found the end zone. I think you'll see this offsides is directly at the hole. Oregon State's nose tackle just makes a move offsides. He's coming backwards when the ball snapped and they blow right by him. As you know, Steve, so many times when you jump offside like that and you know it's going to be called, at least for that split second, you stop playing, and that's all it takes for Napoleon Kaufman to make a play. See the play very well blocked. Pat Casey inside. Richard Thomas, a great block at the point of attack. We talked about big plays in the running game, blocking downfield to Ron Hill, getting a block on a defensive back. Key to the game. Control Kaufman, and you got to give him one. 39 yard touchdown run by Kaufman. He has 78 yards rushing in the game. And they're going to go for two. To it's a numbers game here for Washington. Go for two to tie it up. 
Extra point here doesn't do him much good on a one on a kick. Bjornsson lets it go. It is caught. Leon and he Neal. Scores it. Leon Neal, a number three tailback. Big play for Washington to pick up the tie. Big play indeed, and we are tied. We'll take a break and be right back. Another look at the touchdown by Kaufman with that blistering speed. No one was going to catch him. See right here, just the draw play. Well blocked again at the point of attack. So well blocked that Richard Thomas has to 360 to find someone to block. And Reggie Tong just can't make the play at the point of attack. Napoleon Kaufman in the open field, much as J.J. Young. No match for anybody on the defense. Dave Janoski, the first to congratulate Napoleon. And a big play on the two-point conversion. The roll out to the right. The outside receivers come inside and pick off those inside pursuit people, and the inside receiver runs a flat route. And there's nobody left there to play defense. See Napoleon Kaufman, 78 yards. That puts him at 995 for the season. Five more to crack that thousand mark. Yes, sir, and he'll be a thousand yards back to back, back to back seasons. Now the kickoff to the Beavers. Young, trouble with the ball. He is down. He's down at the four-yard line. Well, tough break. Touched his knee down at the four. So the Beavers will have first and ten, but they start at their own four-yard line. Husky defense with a chance to reestablish field position. Husky offense feels like they've established some physical dominance. Got this game tied up. Now it's time for the Husky defense to step forward and and make some plays. Three and out here would be a big boost for the Husky cause. Well, this is where Oregon State has been a different team this year than in the past. They've sucked it up in these situations, driven the ball down people's throat with just their size and the power of football game. First down at the four. John Young Fumble. fumbles the football and Washington has recovered. That's the first fumble of the ball game, and that gives Washington possession at the 12 yard line first down even better than three plays and out is one play and out big play enough David Kilpatrick with the fumble recovery right there you can see the inside play right there and the hit by Steve Springstead gets a hand on the ball and then just Husky pursuit from that point on John Young has almost been without fumble in his career at Oregon State and one thing on your own you know, inside your own five yard line if you're an option offense that to a certain degree mm -hmm. takes out the outside part of the option because you're not going to pitch it as Absolutely. much down there so the fullback becomes a bigger target on first down Bjornsson incomplete intended for Matt Jones and that play appeared to be there That's important to throw that on rhythm and try to get the ball out in front of the fullback before anybody has time to go, this ball needs to be thrown right now. Eric takes one step too many and then throws it down and behind Matt Jones. You're right, it was there. Big play should have been touchdown probably from there. So it's second down and goal. Ball at the eighth of Oregon State. There's Vino Bryant. Met at the five yard line and smothered there. That was Reggie Tongue to make the tackle for the Beavers. So it'll be third and goal at the five. Well, any bets that we'll see the same play as the extra point right here. Ball somewhat to the left side of the field. 
There are some offensive philosophers that say that from inside the 10 in a first and goal situation, you need to either run it three times or throw it three times. The Huskies trying to mix it up here. Find themselves in a third and five. It's nice to have a big athlete like Eric Bjornsson at quarterback in a situation like that because he can create something out of nothing. Big, big hole. Touchdown, Huskies, Bino Bryant. A lot of daylight there for Bryant, and he scores it, and the Huskies go ahead for the first time since early in the first quarter of play. Well, certainly the, the tackle was there, just needed some help. I don't know which defensive back that was that made the play. Again, tremendous blocking on the offensive line of the Washington Huskies. Take a look at this that just caves in everybody. Right there, it's Herschel Curry trying to hold on. And a great read by Bean O'Brien to cut it back against the grain. And Herschel Curry one on one. Huskies feel like Bean O'Brien one on one with anybody can pick up a couple of yards. Travis Hansen to attempt the point after touchdown. He's only missed one all season. And it is good. So now there's 28 seconds to play in the third quarter, and Washington has gone on top 21 to 14. What a quarter of play for Washington. Oh, absolutely. Total momentum change. Uh, most importantly, the Huskies do a great job of taking advantage of the turnover and getting six points out of it, seven points out of it. You can see Obilovich comes a little bit too far upfield. That's the threat of Eric Bjornsson on the rollout that way. And then Bino Bryant with the lots of open field. Herschel Curry unable to keep him out. See Bino. Celebrating with the approximately 5,000 Husky fans. He made the six hour trip from Seattle down to Corvallis. It was surprising though, Chuck. Uh, Washington turned some tickets back. That's the first time I can recall that in a long time. Talking with Gabe Burr, the ticket manager says that they sold fewer tickets for this game in the high 4,000s than they, than they have in quite some time. But those approximately 5,000 are. A little bit happier than they were about a half an hour ago. A well, lot happier. Yeah, yes, just just sure. a point of kicker trivia, too. That extra point has Travis Hansen now having kicked more extra points than anyone in Husky history. That's 109 PATs, breaking the tie with Jeff Jacob. Husky kickoff. J.J. Young in the end zone, touchdown, or touches his knee down, so it'll be brought out to the 20 yard line. First down and 10 Beavers down now 21 to 14. You talk about the importance of special teams play. Remember that whole scene of events, that whole series of events was set up by the mishandled kickoff that J.J. Young ended up downing in his own four yard line and then the fumble and resulting Husky touchdown. So special teams play is huge field position and momentum turners. We look at the scoring drive on that play. It only took three plays, 54 seconds to go eight yards. Bino Bryant with a touchdown. First down, Beavers. To J.J. Young. Turns on the speed. Gets a couple, perhaps three yards on the carry. He's run out of bounds by Springstead and Russell Harston. Good job that time of the inside people of Washington filtering through the traffic and using that speed that they have. Well, they're just pushing Oregon State's options so deep from the quarterback position right now. Makes it very slow to develop. Gives the opportunity for the pursuit from Washington to catch up. And that's just good inside line play. Yeah, the, the pitch man is trying to keep his pitch relationship with the quarterback. And if he's five yards off of the quarterback, he's got to gain eight or nine yards before he's even back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. Here's Young looking for some room. Nothing there. And he's stopped. For a loss. You see a little fire on this uh, Washington side right now, Chuck. Well, they're starting to sense that they can that they can stop this and that they are going to physically dominate. That was Richie they, Chambers on the stop. Excuse me, Chuck. As they as they expect to. You can see the inside counter has been successful as a change up against the option. That time Richie Chambers just steps up and levels JJ Young. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. A brand new ball game here in Corvallis and Washington has gone on top 21 to 14.
Washington dominating third quarter play to go on top of Oregon State 21 to 14 as we open the fourth quarter of play Washington 109 yards rushing in the third quarter to only 30 for Oregon State and we have third down and six for the Beavers as we begin the fourth quarter the ball at the Oregon State 24 yard line. Chad Paulson hangs on to it now as he's retreated back to the five, buried at the four. Same situation we just talked about. The quarterback is being forced so deep that the relationship's very bad, as Chuck said, with the between the quarterback. And this is just uh, excellent penetration by Washington's defensive line driving this option out. Look at here. Raheem is very deep now, as you can see, five, six yards deep right there. There is no pitch relationship. Paulson is virtually two, three yards. It's more of a handoff than it is a pitch. Ink Aliaga, Justin Thomas way back in Raheem Muhammad's face. Quarterback's got to turn it up right there. There's no other way to, to do it. No rush put on Colas. It'll be taken at the 48 yard. Oh, what a hit. What a great hit. That was Tony Obilovich. Man. And Dean you know, O'Brien will get up a little slowly. Dean O'Brien dancing, looking for room, and then his dance card was filled. That's right. Tony doesn't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance. <laughs> Dean O'Brien looking to go over 1,000 yards in career punt returns. Has three yards so far today and didn't really add to the total right there. Mm -hmm. So Washington will take over first down and 10 at the 47-yard line of Oregon State. We have 14.07 to go in this game with the Huskies on top, 21 to 14. Just a huge turnaround. It's something's got to happen good here for Oregon State. You see Washington sneak on a guy at the end. Huskies go on the field with 10 men to start the series, missing a wide receiver. Finally, like a Huckabee comes off the sideline just to line up, so they've got 11 guys, but by that time, play clock had run down, and Eric Bjornsson says, that's not the way I want to start a series that can at least put a hammer to that nail. Absolutely. In that beaver coffin. Well, Oregon State needs a strong series here. They cannot afford to go down against a team like Washington by more than a touchdown. Washington with excellent field position. See the total yardage breakdown. Oregon State hasn't had a whole lot this second half, primarily because of two big losses. You know, a loss today would be absolutely devastating for Washington. They've got USC and Washington State up next. And if they would lose today, it is a good chance they lose to USC and Washington State be a losing season. That's five and three right now. You tack on three more, and that ends up five and six. It's been 17 years, I believe, since Washington has finished under 500. It would be awfully nice to gather some momentum. You start looking at next year's schedule kind of early, but let's take a look at next year's schedule for Washington. You open the second year of a two-year probation with USC, Ohio State, Miami at Miami, Boy. and UCLA. Wow. So, uh, you know, even, even a good football team has a chance to start next year at 0-4, and, and you don't want to finish up the last season on a down note. You want to have some enthusiasm and motivation to come in into a schedule like that. Mm -hmm. First down, Huskies at the Beaver 47-yard line. Bjornsson, the quarterback. Kaufman. And Rico Petrini is there to wrap up Kaufman right around the line of scrimmage. Well diagnosed by Petrini. He's got great quickness. Got to him in a hurry. Huskies have thrown the ball a little bit on first down. This time, go to the draw play, much like the play that Napoleon scored on earlier. But you've got your inside linebackers not, not buying any of that. And Petrini steps up to make the tackle. About a foot gained on the play. Second down and a long nine. Bjornsson under pressure gets it away and it's. Oh! No, it is not. It's not a touchdown, but what a great catch at the one yard line. Fantastic catch. You see it lays out. That's Dave Janoski, a freshman from Corona, California. Herschel Curry was covering him there. A great throw by Eric Bjornsson, and a great job of Dave by Dave Janoski by going to get the ball. 
A lot of times you've got receivers that got have speed, and then you need a receiver that has the speed to go get it. Look at that one-handed catch. Curry got a piece of that right arm of Dave Janoski. Take a look at this. Actually, great catch. Look at that. I mean, there was actually, we, we missed a play right there. For, That's for, Matt Jones, the fullback, trying to punch it in. And does. Touchdown signaled. The great catch by Janoski sets up the inside plunge by fullback Matt Jones. The offensive lineman get enough push. To Pete Gallagher. Gallagher seeing some extended time here with all the injuries to Pat Kessie and P.A. Emerson. And Matt Jones celebrates his first touchdown right. of his senior season. What a turnaround in this third and fourth quarter. Seemingly a game nearly under control by Oregon State at the start of the second half. Travis Hansen for the point after touchdown try. And it is good. So now we have 13.09 to go. And Washington has doubled the score on the Beavers, 28 to 14 after Washington led at the half, 14 to 3. Dave Janossi getting a chance to play a lot more today with the Injury to Joe Krolik missing some time and the permanent suspension of Jason Shelley. He had seven catches coming into the game, but makes a big, big play here. You can see this is nothing other than I'm going to drop back and throw it as far as I can. You're one on one. You go get it. And Dave Janoski does does a great job of bursting on the ball. It's that left hand underneath it keeps that ball good leverage. Well, that's oh. a big league catch by Janoski. Mm -hmm. Herschel Curry actually pinned his arm real well probably pass interference to tell you the truth and the Janoski just makes a great catch. Dave Janoski also on the kickoff team chance to make another great play as the cheer staff came down the full Husky band as well Dave Janoski and Eric Bjornsson and Joe Krolik make up a three member what they call the long hair club <laughs> which has more to do with or as much to do with attitude as we're going to get it done. We don't care what we look like or how we do it, but we're going to get it done. You can see the turnaround Boy. right here, zero in the second half. Not a big day for the Beavs. Again, they've had two large losses in this second half on the option play. Jason Crabb to kick it off for Washington. Drives it deep. J.J. Young back at the two-yard line, the one-yard line. Gathers it in, comes to the 10. Up in there, banged out of bounds at the 14-yard line another, by Lewis Jones. Another great kick by Jason Crabb deep in the corner. and Lewis Jones, Leif Johnson, and those special teams Mavericks making some great plays. Field position again, so important. You can see, where does this ball come down? It's in the air over four seconds, five yards from the boundary right on the goal line. A lot of coaches would rather have that kick than a kick just blasted out of the end zone. Now the Beavers need a drive here. They can't afford to get any further down. Trailing at 28 to 14 with 13.05 to go in the game. And once again, field position like this takes out some aspects yeah. of this option offense. Frederick Thomas, the fullback. Not going to get anything. Good solid play in the middle by the Huskies. Oregon State needs to establish something inside that they have not been able to do this second half. They've tried to go outside, and every time it's resulted in big losses. You saw the defensive play by Donovan Schmidt. We talked in our open and featured DeMarco Farr and how important it is to take out the fullback part of that option. Other than the two big plays by J.J. Young, the Huskies have done a good job of stopping the outside portion as well. The inside has been virtually non-existent. Beavers second down at the 15. Here's the option. Muhammad wrapped up by Farr as he comes back to the line of scrimmage. Gets nothing. Again, Marco Farr right there to make the play. Again, the quarterback is being forced so deep that the pitch man stopping the pit is covering the quarterback and the pitch. Take a look at this. He's already back almost to Cameron Reynolds. And then it takes a, a quick move to even get back to the line of scrimmage. Just got to take that angle shorter. As you can see from there, he's five yards behind the ball. Very difficult then. You got to gain ten, 10 to get five. Third down and eight for Oregon State at their 15 yard line. Mohamed well, to throw. It is caught. And that'll be a first down at reception by Sylvester Green, his fifth of the year. Stopped by Russell Hairston. 
First down, Beavers. I was thinking just before the snap that it's been a long time since we saw Muhammad throw a ball, but given his lack of effectiveness, generally in this part of the field, you probably won't see it. Surprised more than just me. Nice route, once again, nothing complicated in the passing game. Just run enough downfield, enough yards for a first down and turn around. I'm gonna throw it to you, because you're the only guy out there that I've got. Bergen State has a passing game that comes the halfback out of the backfield. We haven't seen it today. Here's J.J. Young coming across the 30. He's tackled by Steve Springstead. Springstead out most of the spring with a knee problem. It's important for Washington here to not give up a big play. If Oregon State needs to score twice to get back into this game, but with this option offense, even if you give up four and five yards a crack, it's going to take them eight minutes to go that 84 yards that they need to go because of the field position. By the time that happens, there's only three minutes left in the ball game. Second down and six now at the 31 of Oregon State. A.J. Young cracked hard by Lyons. Chambers, I believe, also down there. Chambers, yes, it is Chambers and Lyons. That was perfectly played by the Washington defense. The dive, the dive fake was handled by the inside man. The quarterback was covered. The pitch men were covered. And then you get hits like this. Correct. Excellent job in the pursuits there. Listen to that sound. Ouch. That hurt me. <laughs> And work on your speed, Jimmy. <laughs> <Yeah>. A lot. <laughs> Third down and five for the Beavers. Very big play. Ten minutes to go. Beavers down by two touchdowns. And we're going to take a timeout. The Beavers will take the timeout. 9.56 remaining. Beavers down 28-14. Be right back. We are back. 28 to 14. Washington leads Oregon State with 9.56 to go. Let's go down to the sideline and David Endress. Well, guys, one person who really amazes me on this football field is J.J. Young. Watch how hard he runs every play and the way he blocks on every play. Now, J.J. is fourth in the conference in rushing right now. Certainly his numbers won't hurt him today either. Unfortunately, the number one rusher in the conference, Napoleon Kaufman, back upstairs. Well, J.J. has 142 yards rushing today. His best game, 162 yards against Pacific in that big Beaver win. Now it's third down and five for Oregon State. They need a big play here. They're at their 32-yard line. Mohammed to the sideline and well overthrown. Incomplete and forces a punt for Washington, for Oregon State. See a lot of activity over on that Oregon State sideline. Got an injured... In, already injured player on the ground again. Bill Laffler, who's an offensive tackle out this week. The knee, I believe. Hazard pay over there, Phil. Gotta, gotta stay alive. Gonna be out. Good thing you got two weeks till that Oregon game. <laughs> well, this will be a long two weeks after the lead that the Beavers have had and, and not playing as well as they'd like to in the second half. So Tim Colas will punt it away, averaging 41.7 yards per game. In this punt formation, the players are already in their lanes to cover the punt. <laughs> Dean O'Brien takes it at the 25, has to retreat. Great special teams play by Oregon State, and he's dropped back at the 19-yard line by Chad Paulson. Let's take another look and see if we can pick up what happened to uh, Laffler over there on the sideline. Well, just the long overthrow on the fade, and Laffler's actually standing on the bench. He takes a shot right on the outside wow. of that right leg, and then comes all the way down to ground level. Well, you wonder about the cornerback and uh, Mark Alford, too. They both hit that bench full speed. Laffler says, I'm standing behind this bench now. I'm not getting back up there again. Yeah, he's uh, not very happy. Ouch. Understandably so. Huskies with a first down at their 21. 
be a decent day for Eric Bjornsson, a 46% passer on the year, right on that pace. Matt Jones steps around a pile of bodies and picks up a couple out to about the 23-yard line. Jones, a senior, 215 pounds. He's only lost 11 yards in his entire career. Corey Hewitt and Kane Rogers combined for the stop on Jones. Matt Jones has been a very good, versatile player for this Husky offense in a long, for a long time. He and Darius Turner shared time for a couple of years, and now Matt, the senior captain, well respected by his teammates, catches the ball well out of the backfield, blocks well, works hard, plays special teams, the kind of player you like to have in a program. Second down and seven now. This is Kaufman. Wow. Oh, he is nifty. Now Kaufman picks up about three where he's stopped by Packy Ina. A transfer from Snow College. Very quick for a big guy, is he? Napoleon Kaufman, very quick even for a little guy. <laughs> Let's check Napoleon Kaufman's. He's got 83 now. now that today. puts him right on 1,000 yep. for the season. Exactly, 83 yards. And the second time that a Husky running back has had two consecutive 1,000-yard scenes, Greg Lewis did it back in his junior and season, senior seasons just a few years ago. Third down in a yard for the Huskies. Jones has the first down as he cracks out to the 34-yard line, and he's tackled by Kane Rogers and William Ephraim. Huskies have a player down at Jesse. Grabbing that left leg, left knee. All those hardworking guys up front that got Napoleon Kaufman over, mm -hmm. over his thousand. Pat, the freshman, or excuse me, the sophomore from Hawaii, already filling in. This is only for, his second start, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, filling in for the injured Frank Garcia. He and P.A. Emerson that alternated starts. P.A. Emerson missing this game with a bad ankle. See Pete Calgas come over and play at that strong guard position, but depth has turned into a problem for Washington and Coach Jim Lambright. One of the reasons for their success over the last few years has been their lack of injuries, and you basically had starters playing every down of every game until the games was were out of hand. But we talked about the injuries on defense, and only five starters starting all nine games so far this year. And on offense, you've seen a lot of bodies rolled through as well. Pat Kessie could be done for the game. 305 pound sophomore, big kid, six feet three. The ball is at the 34 yard line. Washington with first down and 10. Hoffman. He's a real garter, isn't he? Once again, this series, if we've seen most of this second half, it's just two tight end, two back. Old time, mid 1970s, yep. high formation football. Power football. The Huskies have certainly dominated. They've proven what they had to in this second half. Napoleon's been over 100 yards five times in 1993. Still needs 13 to go over the 100 yard mark here today. Huskies very successful with the back over 100. Last week, Napoleon over 100. First time in 21 games that the Huskies have had a back over 100 yards and lost the game. And he's an excellent receiver as well. Second down and six. Hoffman's not going to go anywhere this time. He is racked up at the 31-yard line. And that was Corey Hewitt, the lad we talked about earlier that was had such a heralded high school career. He's 225 pounds from Montana. And blitz all the way. You can see Corey coming from the middle linebacker position, just runs right by Matt Jones, I believe, tackles the quarterback, the running back, and probably two officials. <laughs> uh, that's how he can be all state at four different <laughs> positions at the same time. That's true. Didn't look at it that way. His big brother, play for the big Beavers, and they needed a big play. Hewitt's brother, Tony Hewitt, is a redshirt freshman on this team as well. Third down and 12 for the Huskies. Time getting short for the Beavers. And they're going to take a timeout. Does Washington? We'll do the same back in a moment.
Only 6.17 to go with Washington leading Oregon State 28 to 14. Third down and 12 for Washington. Dennis Edwards with a lot of pressure. Boy, that and play was there. Thank goodness for the Beavers. There was a big pass rush because uh, the fullback ran the same play that he ran earlier in the game, got a key first down. Dennis Edwards, the man that has to cover him, was the first who put the pressure on the quarterback. That's one of those plays that it's going to be a big play one way or the other, unless Eric Bjornsson does what he does and just dumps it. Now the Beavers need a punt return here. Joe Douglas standing back on his 30-yard line. Washington's punt team thinking, protect, protect. Here come the Beavers. Joe Douglas at the 35, calling for the fair catch. He'll receive it at the 36-yard line, so the Beavers will start from that point. Only 6.05 to go, and Oregon State down by two touchdowns. Now again, I, I remind you to look for this halfback sneaking out of the backfield. That's been Oregon State's play when they needed something to happen quickly. It's the onside halfback, typically sneaks through where he normally blocks, just keeps going. He also runs that out of what they call a fan pattern, where the halfback blocks the outside person man who takes the pitch. He just runs straight at him and keeps going up the sideline. He's been very successful. We haven't seen any sort of reverse or misdirection pitch to the wide out coming back or anything like that today either. That movement up front, DeMarco Farr is across the line, along with Star uh, Starling uh, two for Oregon State. I think it's going to go against the Huskies. Well, I actually thought I think it's going to go against the Beavers. The way. Personally, but we'll find You're out. Right. All right, I got one. <laughs> I think DeMarco actually started to jump and, and Latu reacted to him, as you see Starling right there. Fortunately, the, the rules aren't very equitable in a situation <laughs> like that. Latu knowing that he's got a block down on DeMarco Farr and he's, his engine's revving on high. The guy moves and so, do, so does Latu. So with a penalty, it makes it first down and 15 for the Beavers. J.J. Young. Knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. He gets, winds up with gaining about a yard on the play, and that's it. He's knocked out of bounds by Russell Hairston and Jamal Fontaine. Again, the double option. Again, the quarterback for, forced very deep. It doesn't look like he's being forced that deep. That's the problem with it. Earlier in the game, Washington was forcing him deep. Seems like for most of this half, he's just been taking himself deep running that option into the short side as well. Had success on both touchdowns. Washington has made appropriate adjustments. You see Jamal Fontaine across the line of scrimmage. On second down and 13. Going deep up the sideline, but it's incomplete intended for Chad Paulson. Well, that was the play we were talking about. Close halfback, just runs out into the flat as though he's going to block that pitch man. Just keeps going, but well defensed. I think it had the Husky defense fooled. Defense. Five yards, repeat second down. The reason I say that is because the three players closest to the play were all linebackers. <laughs> I guess they would have been fooled then. Penalty, penalty against the Huskies. They're averaging, what, nine and a half penalties a game, I think, Chuck. It's a defense with a, it's rolling through a lot of, through a lot of people, and when you get inexperienced sometimes, you, you get penalties. J.J. Young with 125 yards but only 18 in this second half. Second down and eight. And Muhammad is dropped for a loss of about a yard. Aliaga is there, the redshirt freshman from Honolulu. Nice job by defensive end Jamal Fontaine. Just forced a misread right there, forcing Muhammad into just kind of swallowing it. You see Fontaine gets upfield and kind of gets in the pith pitch, or excuse me, it's uh, Aliaga that gets upfield and gets in the pitch path, and Muhammad tries to turn it up, but Aliaga is able to come down and make the play, as you see kind of an instant replay from the reverse angle. Other side. <laughs> CLI. And it's going to be walked off Three. once again against Oregon State. See Brad Thompson entering the game now for Colorado. Thompson is another one of these true freshmen from Texas, an area that Jerry Pettibone has really been able to recruit. 
this last year. He's picked up 10 kids out of Texas. Why? Why, why, why has he, I know why he wants to, because they've got some great football Absolutely. players, but what, what is the lure? Those guys want to get out of the Southwest Conference? Well, I well, think that's one of them. Talk about it here in a second. He has a lot, a lot of strong connections in Texas. Coach Jerry is from Texas. Mohammed has dropped down at the 35 yard line. There's a penalty. The tackle by Lewis Jones, a junior from Los Angeles. It's like they're going to call a face max penalty, mm -hmm. but it looks like he had more of the edge of a shoulder pad or a face mask. Or the that's right. edge of a helmet as opposed to a face mask. And I don't ask that Texas question because Oregon State isn't a good place to go, but if I'm a, a player that wants to run the option, there are plenty of opportunities back closer to my hometown, as you see. Well, Mohammed I think gets out and get a look at whether he does get any. Ah, that well, looks pretty, pretty much mask. like a face mask. Well, Jerry has uh, t connections there, as Jimmy mentioned. Two of his assistant coaches come from the state of Texas. Jerry coached there himself. In fact, it was one of the reasons that Dutch Bachman, the athletic director here, wanted to select Jerry. He knew he had that background. There were also fewer scholarships coming out of that conference in that area this year. They had used up many of their scholarships. I, I believe a and only had 12 to give out this season. On first now. Back to the line of scrimmage goes J.J. Young, and that's it. He stopped by DeMarco Farr. Washington with another player down. Looks like Jamal Fontaine grabbing his left knee or left ankle. It is Fontaine. Chuck, as you look down there, number 69 for Oregon State is Brad Thompson, 6'3", 333 pounds. True freshman. Came here at 17 years old. <laughs> as soon Yikes. as he grows. Yes. Matures a little bit. <laughs> His Beavers, body matures. Beavers will take a timeout. Very short on time now. Four minutes, 37 seconds to go, and down 28 to 14. As we mentioned earlier, the Beavers will have next week off and then get up for that very big game, biggest game of the season for them against Oregon over in Eugene. And that'll be a tough contest as well. Oregon, an explosive offensive team, although they didn't really explode against Washington, did they? No, it, uh, they self self imploded. Uh, <laughs> Danny O'Neill throws six interceptions, seven turnovers on the day. Uh, that was probably Washington's best defensive effort, uh, both in making plays and, and confusing Danny O'Neill. At least three of the interceptions were direct results of basically he made a, a drastic misread and threw it into an area that he had no business throwing it. Mm -hmm. Jamal Fontaine continuing to be worked on. Let's see if we can get a look at what happened to number 47. Watch the helmet of his own guy, Inkaliaga, right there. Kicking, you see the brace on that left knee already, and then he hits the ankle with the helmet and snaps everything all over the place. And you get 250 pounds worth of Aliaga with a piece of hard plastic moving pretty, pretty fast, and you're gonna, something's gotta give. It's usually bone or flesh. It is amazing, the injuries. I don't think I've ever seen a Pac-10 team with this many injuries. Second down and 10. Saved him up over the last few years, and we're using him up in the last couple of weeks. J.D. Stewart in the game with fullback. Muhammad looking to throw the ball incomplete, and he was wrapped up by Iwaliko. Is that right? Good pressure by Mikey Iwiliko. Iwiliko. Flag on the play. Raheem did a good job now. of just getting rid of the ball if they don't call it intentional grounding. I'd be surprised at this call because he was almost hit. I think they threw the flag because it hit an offensive lineman. It hits an offensive lineman, and uh, I don't think those guys are uh, well, that's an unusual supposed, call. supposed uh, <laughs> Technically, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> Good job by Muhammad of yeah. getting rid of it. I thought it was a good job, too. I'm surprised at the call. So that'll make it third down. Ball at midfield. Now only four and a half minutes to go in the game for Oregon State. Well, you have to commend the Huskies on the way they've come back. Whatever coach said to them at halftime certainly changed, changed things. Touching by an offensive player. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot and loss of down. They're down. Go ahead. Hits sounds him like in the a, head. Sounds like a criminal offense. Yeah. <laughs> fourth down for the Beavers. Fourth down and 15.
really have no choice here. Make an effort to win the game. And J.J. Young calls a timeout. Just about to see a delay call. All right, we're going to take a timeout as well, and we'll be back to Corvallis right after this. Washington on top, 28 to 14. Third down and 16 for the Beavers. Mohammed throwing incomplete. Sylvester Green was the nearest man to the football. Now in fourth down, the ball at the 45. Call us to punt it to Bean O'Brien. Well, the pattern that Sylvester Green was running was the corner pattern. Almost another block. Nice punt by Colas. Fair catch called for and received at the 11-yard line. And Sylvester made the nice in move and then just slipped down himself. That's why the pass was so far off target. Actually made a pretty good move. Nice punt by Colas that time, 45 yards. We have four minutes and 17 seconds to go. The Beavers must stop the Huskies here and try to get two on the board in a very short period of time. And with this offense, that's tough to do. The Huskies have, have shown a lot today. They had every chance, every reason in the world to just kind of mail it in in the second half. And they didn't, showed a lot of character. They really seemed leaving the field in the first half like they would pack it in. They just didn't seem to be in it. They created opportunities for themselves early in the ball game and just hadn't executed. That was Ernie Conwell who came across the line of scrimmage. And the penalty goes against him. He's an interesting uh, young man. Two of his brothers are, are race car drivers as is his father. And his brother Vince, who races up at Monroe, paints his car in Washington colors, purple and gold. He's indoctrinated, huh? Yeah. Oregon State with 11 penalties to the line. That is an awful lot for an Oregon State team. That's Dean O'Brien getting out to about the six yard line. He's met there by Tom Holmes and Kane Rogers. So much of playing football is mental. You can physically put yourself in position to make a play, but if you're not mentally into what you're doing, then you don't finish up with that play. First half, I think that's kind of what Washington was doing, and then in the second half, they put themselves in position to make plays, both offensively and defensively, and then made them. Took advantage of opportunities with the fumble recovery deep in Oregon State territory to get a touchdown on the board. Big play. And then by Dave Janoski. Second down and 14. Jornsson with time to throw. And it goes right through the hands of William Ephraim. <laughs> like a little roll reversal there. Ephraim was running the route and DJ McCarthy was <laughs> right behind him. Well, that's, was that's what Oregon State needed right there. A pick there may have made a huge difference. See, Take a look at this. See, Eric's, Eric's, I'm sorry, Steve, go ahead. See if he doesn't put it right. He does. He puts it right in Ephraim's hand. He just needs to pick it off. And you can see the uh, real estate in front of him. He had a touchdown if he'd held on to it. Well, and Eric Nordson rolls out to the right. No pressure. He has full vision on the play. Ephraim's in perfect position. I think we might get a minus on that oh one boy. from Coach Jeff Woodruff. Just catch that ball, and this is a ball game. No problem. That's why, to the 10 yard line. <laughs> that's why you see the, the dive play on third and 14. <laughs> he says, we're not gonna, we're gonna make them make it a ball game. We're not gonna make one for them. Mark Schultz on the tackle for Oregon State. And Oregon State will spend the timeout with three minutes and 15 seconds to go. Try to conserve. Here's DeMarco Farr, who is going into the dressing room injured today. One of several, oh, excuse me, it's Fontaine. Well, it's easy to get confused because you're right, Jimmy. He is one of several Huskies that have been carted off. Re required medical attention today. That's a big loss. Of course, there have been so many big losses for Washington this year. Running out of good thing you got the flip card. 
<laughs> well, the Beavers have an excellent punt block team. Mark Williams on the outside, number 31, has world-class speed, if you will. Well, you see, too, uh, John Waddell only 12 yards deep. Washington basically in a tight punt formation, a formation that's basically designed to protect the punter. It's not a coverage formation. It's just don't let the kick get blocked. And John Wardell is going to shorten his steps. It's basically a catch and kick. It's almost field goal protection for a punt. Joe Douglas at the 50. The 40. And a penalty flag is thrown at the 32-yard line. Looks like they got Clement Santine for an illegal block of some sort. John Wardell, the punter, down involved in the play and getting up slowly with his left arm. Looks like he's got a bad shoulder or something wrong with his left arm. Illegal block in the back during the return. 10 yards. From the end of the run, first down 10. Is this the most penalties in the Pettibone era? It's got to be pretty darn close. Now it's 10 penalty, or it's 12 penalties now today for 83 yards. Well, I can't remember any game with more penalties than this. Last year, they were the least penalized team most of the year. They're the least penalized team in the conference this year. First down and 10 Beavers at the Washington 48 yard line, but there's only 3.04 to go. Interesting formation. J.D. Stewart, one of three fullbacks that rotate in the offense for Oregon State, and he's out across the 45 to about the 44-yard line. Well, the Beavers will run their normal offense out of this double slot. They'll send one back in motion, one half back, bring him back so they can run the option to that side. And occasionally they'll start him back and then turn him around. Second out and six. And the play is blown dead. There's some motion somewhere. The 25 second clock had plenty of time. Two flags out on the field, one on each side of the field. False start, offense. Five Boy. yards, repeat second down. And that's penalty number 13 for Oregon State. And almost all of those in this second half of play. Hopefully they're trying to use them all up before they get into that Oregon game in two weeks. Gonna look there. The advantage that Washington has had in the penalty phase. Second down, 11. Incomplete on the far side. Ball thrown a little high. And I think Richie Chambers had that number eight dialed into his radar pretty early. You see the, what we used to call when I was in high school, the hospital ball thrown right. by Raheem <laughs> Muhammad. Yeah. Stretch him out. That was Mark Alford, the intended receiver, junior from Sacramento, who was the quarterback last year for the Beavers, not by Richie Chambers. Now with the incomplete pass, clock is stopped, 2.18 to go, and it's third down and nine for Oregon State. A lot of new faces on this Husky defense getting a chance to play. Yeah, he's caught and immediately going out of bounds is Chris Cross. Now this is the most passing we've seen all year for Oregon State. Nice route, nice throw. Take a look, this is the corner route. Receiver Chris Cross plants to the inside. You'll see him come back into your picture right here. It's a nice move to the outside, wide open, then gets out of bounds. Scotty Greenlaw, the defender, one of those Fresh faces getting a chance to play. Cedric White, David Ritchie, John Fiala. First down and 10 on the Husky 29 yard line. Here's the option. J.J. Young is out of bounds. He ran into Chad Paulson right there at the 16, uh, at the 22 yard line. Uh, the clock is stopped with 2.06 to go. This is something that Jim Lambright has done a little bit differently than Don James. A lot of situations like this with only two, a two-score lead and two minutes to go. Don James about here would be getting those first-team guys warming up to go back in. But Jim Lambright says those second-team guys have to learn how to play with pressure also. Oregon State touchdown here, an onside kick, and Oregon State's got a minute and a half to score once. Mohammed. Throwing on the run, incomplete on the near sideline. 
And that was cross once again, the intended receiver covered closely by Scott Greenlaw, the sophomore from Issaquah. Well, Muhammad tried to figure out what he was going to do about three different times, started to run the football, and somehow got to, had the presence of mind to still throw it before he crossed the line of scrimmage. Take a look at this. You see he turns up right here, and now, uh-oh, I got problems. Somehow gets it out there, gets rid of the ball. I think Igualiaga had some input into that <laughs> decision-making process. Third down and long for the Beavers, and it pretty much comes down to this play. Nice hold. Cedric, or rather, J.D. Stewart picks up the big first down down to the 15-yard line. Stops, stops the clock on the first down yardage. Minute 55, ball at the 15. Just the inside dive, and Stewart just goes where he's supposed to go and keeps running forward. Absolutely. That was well blocked. Looked like the triple. First down for the Beavers. And Mohammed will keep it. Crosses the 10, gets down to about the 8-yard line. No timeouts left for Oregon State, so the clock continues to run. Did not pick up a first down. Egaliaga on the tackle for Washington. As the Beavers come up with the ball quickly, a minute and 27, the clock is running. You can see Raheem gets the signal from the sideline and has to make the call. Pitch to J.J. Young, gets a great block, and Young scores the touchdown. Another outstanding block by Chad Paulson, and Young has scored his third touchdown of the afternoon. And boy, did Raheem Muhammad take a shot here on this pitch. Does an excellent job of getting rid of the ball, runs the double option again, and just gets the heck knocked out of him. We take a look here. One of the linebackers of the safety forcing the pitch. You see Chambers from the outside. I think that's who it is. Boom, you can see the start of that. Just a nice run. Explodes through people. It's great to have speed. 154 yards now rushing for J.J. Young. Here's the point after touchdown. No problem, it's good. Flag on the play, looks like Washington came offside. So that should come on the kick. Which could be important because you're in an onside kick situation and it just gets Oregon State five yards closer to that Husky goal line. Let's yeah. take another look at J.J. Young and this touchdown run and to see if he can pick up 35 Chad Paulson with that excellent block. Double option, you see J.D. Stewart, and then the great shot that uh, is delivered to Raheem, and then just a good uh, good effort by J.J. Young getting in the end zone. Dave Endress is down on the sideline, so let's go down and join him. David? Well, guys, this brings up an interesting scenario. Remember last week at Stanford, Oregon State scored late, went for the onside kick, and recovered in an uh, excellently executed onside kick play. Let's watch right here. Washington has seen the other side of the successful onside kick. They executed one against California in their big comeback win. Oh, what a game that was. You're going to see a lot of little numbers and a lot of big numbers on the field. Not a lot of 50s, 60s, and 70s. Washington with their hands team on the field. But you know, Chuck, that Oregon State is a team that, for a team that's been down and has three wins, which is you know up from years in the past, but still is the beginning of a building program this team doesn't quit you think after what's happened in the third and fourth quarter that uh, they could have picked up their can't and gone home too here's the onside kick try goes 10 yards but it's wrapped up by the Huskies no it's not oh it's dropped and Oregon State has the football Leif Johnson of the Huskies steps up to make the play has every opportunity to looks like the ball came loose well, it certainly appeared to have it momentarily, and it apparently well, Washington got oh, it back. Washington get, get, get it back. It did not come out. Richard Thomas comes out of the pile with it. You cannot believe the amount of tugging and pulling and pushing that's going on in the bottom of those piles. You'll say, you're just a kicker. What do you know? I was actually in on one of those <laughs> yeah. on, a, well, that, on a fumble once. You're exactly right, Chuck. That's what's going on underneath that pile as people are still pulling while the pile's there and the officials really don't get a look at it. Oregon State tries the bunch approach. Leif Johnson, you see, steps up, but just doesn't quite get all of the ball, and it goes down around his feet. William Ephraim says Oregon State ball. Wishful thinking. 
you can see where Chris Royal at the end of the play, another one of those Texas true freshmen, claimed he had the football, and Jerry seems like he agrees with him. So it'll be first down now for Washington at the 50-yard line, and they can just run out the clock now. No timeouts remaining for Oregon State. A minute 10 on the game clock, and that's what they're going to do. They'll just touch down. And Bjornsson down on one knee, clock rolling at a minute five to go. Don't forget Oregon State will be off next week but back in action the following week against the University of Oregon and the Washington Huskies. Two big games at Husky Stadium coming up against USC next week followed by the Washington State Cougars. This, this win will wrap up a winning season for Washington once again. Six wins for Jim Lambright ties the school record for most wins by a first year coach with six with two weeks to go Been a tough year for Jim Lambright in his initial season. You know it's interesting that Lambright's entire coaching career high school community college Washington uh, as a player all within 40 yards of Husky State uh, 40 <laughs> miles of Husky Stadium. He actually went to the same high school that I did up at Everett High School and uh, coached a little bit of high school ball and junior college ball has been a big part of this program for a long, long time, getting his chance to handle the reins for the first time in what has to be one of the most difficult situations possible on the field, lots of injuries and graduation losses, uh, lots of expectations from, from fans, expectations inside the program as well. Tough job, tough job to take over that situation. He's done a good job. Remember too, we only had 10 days or so to prepare for his first game as a head coach. It's been, uh, and he's, he's coaching the defense, too, still, isn't he? And well, he's a co defensive coordinator as well as the head coach. He's uh, well, filling lots of roles and filling them well. Ball game over here in Corvallis. Washington comes back strong in the second half to win it. Huskies 28, Beavers 21. We'll have a final word in a moment. Good ball game today in Corvallis. Oregon State won the first half, Washington the second half, and the Huskies come on top 28 to 21. Oregon State's penalty has hurt them severely. 13 penalties for 18 yards, but Washington dominated that third quarter of play, outrushed Oregon State 109 yards to 30, and scored 18 points. Huskies just, did a great job of coming back. They certainly did. Just two or three great big plays. They say there are four or five big plays in a game that if you just win the majority of those, you can win the game if you're an evenly matched team or close to it. And the, the Huskies, sir, won them in the second half, going well, away. Other than the second quarter, Washington played pretty well. It gave up the two big running play touchdowns, the long plays to J.J. Young, but defensively, they uh, did a better job in the second half of you know, maintaining pitch leverage, maintaining angles and pursuit angles, not giving up the big play, and the offense did a good job of taking advantage of the opportunities that they both created for themselves and that the defense created for them. Uh, a big comeback, a team that supposedly has nothing to play for with no bowl game out there, obviously plays because they like to win. And another close but no cigar for Oregon State. Who knows what would have happened had they recovered that onside kick and they go down by seven. A couple of notes, Kaufman, we had over a thousand yards uh, with his running today, but he took some losses. So he has 82 yards rather than 83 and still needs a yard to gain a thousand yards on the year. Still a pretty good effort by Napoleon Kaufman, oh, yeah. up with 82 ball control. You know, turnovers minimized by Washington. Uh, not a, a good job against a team that you probably have better players than. Of not making mistakes yourself, make you make them beat us. And Oregon State couldn't do it today. Uh, JJ Young was, uh, Young was dynamite for Oregon State. He gained 154 yards on the ground. That's two yards more than the entire Washington team rushing. But Washington comes on top on the scoreboard. The final score here in Corvallis, 28 to 21 Huskies. Now I'm Jimmy Jones along with Chuck Nelson, Steve Priest, and David Endress saying so long from Corvallis. The final again, Huskies win it 28-21.